Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boss Rush Book Club. The Boss Rush... Ah. <laughs> Never gets old, does it? No, I've... Uh, my voice is already kind of shot because I've been having work meetings all the last two days, like a big old work summit. So I'm tired. All right, ready? <laughs> Three. Yeah. Two. One. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boss Rush Video Game Book Club, the Boss Rush Podcast monthly spoiler cast and review discussion show about the games that you voted on. I am one of your hosts, Pat Klein, and alongside me is a newcomer and probably knows as much about unitology as the any uh, as the chief unitologist himself. I, I I don't remember what the title was, but please welcome Laron Dawkins. The PC most. Hey everyone! Hey everyone! What's popping? <laughs> hey Laurent, congr- Welcome to book club. You know, first thank time. You for, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is my first book club. Thank you for having me. Like, uh, like, like long, long time listener, first, first time caller. <laughs> I guess they would say. Yep. Now we appreciate you here. You uh, know the the lore of this game that we're going to be talking about like better than pretty much most experts. So. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, come back to me come back to me when i start doing like dead space breakdown videos <laughs> oh, sweet we'll look forward to that i unfortunately don't have another guest with us today uh they had a medical emergency and uh, unfortunately weren't able to join us this time but we will definitely look to try and get chris from the franchise festival on a uh, later episode but we really appreciate him taking the time to play through the game and you know power through and like have that commitment to come onto the podcast. Unfortunately, shit happens. So get well, Chris. Anyways, uh, if you didn't catch uh, catch the drift of uh, what we're going to be talking about this week, we're going to be talking about Dead Space, particularly the remake. But Dead Space was originally a game that came out on October eighth in twenty or two thousand eight. And it came out on the PS3, Xbox, and PC. By back then, it was known as EA Redwood Shore. Today we oh, know. Wow, it. I remember that name. <laughs> Today we know it as Visceral, and unfortunately, Visceral does not exist anymore. Um, but when it did come out, the game was very well received. Uh, it received an 89 on Metacritic uh, back in the original days. Uh, then jump forward here about ooh, 15 years later, and uh, the EA decided to remake a sequel, probably because the original producer of Red Dead Space jumped and uh, made his own game called Crystal Protocol, which EA found as a threat and decided to remake Dead Space to kind of counter it. Uh, so Sounds we, about right. Yep. We received it on January 27th. 2023 it came out on the ps5 the xbox series and the pc and this time it was made by ea motive and uh well nothing uh changed in the reception it actually also received an 89 on metacritic uh so it a lot of people you know they applauded ea's effort they said it looks really good like a classic modern day update um and uh yeah sadly though um ea that didn't think uh, 89 was very successful so yeah ea's being <laughs> ea yep if it ain't selling 15 million copies in the first 2 days it's a failure that seems to be most uh triple a studios these days so uh yeah yes. yeah <laughs> yeah uh so I am like, kind of bummed. Well, I am kind of bummed out because, uh, because like it did start out in the '90s. I want to say it had '93 at one point, and then eventually, as the as the uh, Metacritic reviews started to really pump in, all of a sudden it hit '89, and I'm like, hmm. In my in my honest opinion, '89 '89 is a fantastic fucking score. So I don't I don't understand like the the logic of some of these companies, you know. And I guess EA needs to be thankful that they're not they're not Ubisoft right now because Ubisoft is catching it. <laughs> yeah, U- Ubisoft right now is uh they uh they just recently um delayed Assassin's Creed Shadow 
uh, Until people uh, next year. That game was supposed to be out next month. Yeah, the I, the issue that a lot of people are speculating is because Star Wars Outlaw did not do quite as good, and one of the complaints is that Star Wars Outlaws had a lot of bugs going on to it. Like E or Ubisoft needs Assassin's Creed to be perfect at launch. They do, yeah. Because they're that it's their fla- it's their flagship title. Mm-hmm. And if that game bombs, then that's going to put a serious hurt on EA because then they won't know what to do with the future of that franchise. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. EA, I, I feel like EA has like so much, so much, so much IPs behind them and stuff like that that you know, like I don't, I don't understand how an '89 knocks, uh, knocks a, a an established franchise off the map. You know, you know, you know I, that's like, oh, go ahead. I feel like they did, like they only came out with the game to appease and compete against Callisto Protocol. That is my only True. reason that I think they came out with this. Like they had. Probably no intention of reviving the series. Yeah, and if I'm being honest, the Callisto Protocol, you know, basically, basically had his own problems and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, uh, according to Glenn Schofield, who's the actual creator of Dead Space, um, Glenn Schofield said that you know, like he, like he ran up against so many things when dealing with the with, with the higher ups and the and the XX and stuff like that, that eventually got to a point where like. Where like he could no longer fight it, so he was just like, okay, we're just gonna let it out then, you know, so like that. And those are in his words. Now, I mean, you know, like as gamers, as gamers, us playing the games in l- real time, because I I bought Clusive Pro called Day One because like I'm a fan of Glenn Schofield's work because of Dead Space, and then when he moved on to then, then when he moved on to um to Battlefield, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know, I I I'm a, I was a fan, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, I picked um, up uh, Clisson Protocol myself day one. Like it, yeah, looked, it looked like an amazing game. It, yeah, yeah. Well, in my opinion, in my opinion, the game, the game looked nice. Uh, mm-hmm. There was definitely once you started digging into the combat and you realize, like you know, for a game that gives you guns, like it, it emphasizes melee combat, you know, stuff like that. It was kind of, it was kind of off putting and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah. Whereas, whereas I feel like Dead Space had that balance, you know, of melee and combat. Like I, I been playing dead space you know like i'm like the dead space remake i'm 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 on my i'm on my second complete run through of the game and i've learned that you know sometimes like you don't even need to shoot your guns like you you know like you can just kinesis something and then just Mm -hmm. start curb stomping them while they're still while they're still frozen in time and you killed them you know and stuff like that you know that's I don't think the original Dead Space had it going on like that. Like, yeah, <laughs> the curb stomp, like you had to like you had to like basically kit out your entire rig to get that good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we start uh, jumping into our thoughts, let's just quickly get some housekeeping out of the way. So if you want to uh, if you want to support the Boss Rush podcast and the Boss Rush Network, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network at the tier that is right for you. Earning perks such as early and ad-free access to this and other podcasts, exclusive access to the Spotlight interview uh, threads, voting rights and on the Video Game Book Club, and more. That's patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. But as always, your listenership and viewership are important, are, are already good enough for us. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and leave a thumbs up or a comment. And if you're listening on podcast services like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, consider leaving us a a five-star rating and review. And also check out the many, many designs on TeePublic to rep your favorite shows and more. And as always, you can check out all of our content, reviews, articles, and more on BossRush.net. All right, so... Uh, to start off, we're just going to kind of give off our opinions of uh, the Dead Space remake, um, but we're going to do it kind of in a non-spoiler way, so, uh, and for like maybe the first 10 minutes, and then, audience, we will warn you ahead of time before we start jumping into the meat of the game, the uh, the meat sack of the game, or the meaty bits. Meat suit. The meat suit. <laughs> yep. The the little, little chips of gore and, you know, visceral that is all over this game uh, yeah mm-hmm. so Laron, mm-hmm. tell me what did you think of dead space like you played both the remake and the uh the original like how how do you feel about the remake compared to the original okay so i honestly feel like 
Motive Motive basically did for Dead Space what the what the Resident Evil team did for RE's two, three, and four so thus far. Uh mm-hmm. this was a, in my opinion, if you've never played Dead Space before, this is the way you should play it, in all honesty. Like they've they've done so much to not just to not just expand upon the original game, but also made so many improvements. They've incorporated they've incorporated gaming mechanics from from the later sequels, Dead Space Two and Three. Um, and they also they also found nice little quirky ways to bring lore that when dead space when the original dead space came out that lore was not established in the canon of the series but because we have we have the remake existing where dead space extraction dead space 2 and dead space 3 and all the various dlcs for both of those games and stuff like that we're now we now are able to actually get more backstory about what's going on in the universe without it actually spoiling future entries into the into the series and i really i i really applaud them for that and you know like i can't take but i can't take enough hats off to what motive did for the series and stuff like that uh it was also great that you know like uh i heard that they that they did reach out to like original to, to original devs that were that were that were basically, you know, available to talk to them about and stuff like that. And they did get some, some, some insight and some feedback and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, you know, that taking that into, into account, given that, you know, like probably some of those people don't want shit to do with EA at this point, you know, but the fact that, you know, like uh, the dead space, the dead space franchise is just like, it's a, it's, it's a cult classic at this point. <laughs> just pardon my words here. Uh, and, you know, and, you <laughs> know, you it, did it, there. <laughs> and you know if, if anyone has love for the game you know from the developers to like to like to like the players and stuff like that you know they're gonna throw their weight in behind it and i i feel like motive i feel like motive is like one of those is going to be one of those gems out there just like you know how sony has like you know like nixes and sucker punch and you know um and and microsoft has bioware and you know like stuff like that you know like this is this is the stuff that this is these are the studios that really make things happen, and we need to we need to embrace those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely appreciate what Motive did with the game. Um, I will say, like, I loved the original Dead Space. Dead Space Two is probably the, my favorite in the entire series. Same here, mm-hmm. same here. Like, I, I, I'm a sucker for sequels. I'm a sucker for sequels. Like, if you if you ask me about my favorite, if you ask me about my favorite my favorite movie series, like I'm gonna say like Terminator Two over Terminator, Aliens over Alien, mm-hmm. Scream Two over Scream. You know, I yep. still know what you did last summer. You know, uh, I, I'm trying to figure out where I feel about like like the Friday the 13th and the Halloweens but the second but the second Nightmare on Elm Street you know was amazing and stuff like that so I have a thing for like sequels because sequels are sequels are they don't stray too far from the original and they find ways to make it more exciting and just as interesting yeah no I, I fully agree with that um yeah uh unfortunately for me like I enjoyed the remake like I thought it was an absolutely beautiful game like the atmosphere is very claustrophobic. It's very, you know, gets very tense at times. The the fact that you're, um, like, it's both, a, for me, it was both a curse, but I understand the idea behind it of the random ammo drops uh, mm-hmm. make kind of forcing you to use other weapons than the ones that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's meant you're trying to scavenge as much resources as possible to fight these the hordes of necromorphs that like just spawn over you Mm -hmm. um but i will say i I, maybe it's because i knew what was going on that i just the second time i or coming back to the ishimura just it did not have the same magic for me i guess (laughs) (laughs) i I, get that i get that it felt like a lot of the places i saw all looked the same it made me wonder how anyone could actually live on this ship because it was so damn claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know, it, then again, then again, yeah. it, it kind of reminds me. I, I'm 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 ex military and I was in the navy for six years. Mm-hmm. And uh, and honestly, like the way that Ishimura was designed, I it feels like it feels like how naval ships are. Like I mean, yeah, it it literally feels like spam in a can sometimes. You know, and especially when you're on ships that have like 
a couple hundred or 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 you know thousand plus you know like 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 service people on and stuff like that yeah I, I i get the feel of it but yeah like it still doesn't it still doesn't take away that this right here already makes it you know like ratchets up the tension you know stuff like that because heaven forbid like <laughs> I always get freaked out whenever I have to walk into one of the bathrooms on the Ishimura. <laughs> Cause there's like, there's nothing you can do when, you, when something jumps out at you in there. And every time the showers seem to always have to go off. It's like real, you know what? They must have those like automatic sensor showers or something. Yeah. Got to. Yeah. Cause it's every which freaking who, time. Every time. Who the heck, who the heck wants to step into a shower and get sprayed by cold water? Cause it always takes a second to heat up. Yep. <laughs> I can't imagine if the ship was kind of offline. That that water's got to be Whew. pretty damn cold. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, and also I kind of I kind of found the secret. Like whenever a necromorph tries to ambush you, it's like the first time. Yeah, it kind of spooks you because you got one from behind. But then it's like they pull the same trick over and over again it's like if you see one in front of you you know for hell there's, there's one, one behind you. you there's one behind you or and that one or is always, always closer than the one in front of you yep or always other the fact where sometimes like sometimes you're walking you're walking around and you know like how like the walls have those fans and stuff like that mm -hmm. and you can see the eyes behind the fan and you're like okay i'm about to get ambushed and stuff like that you know it's stuff like that but <laughs> mm -hmm. but i don't know i guess i guess in a way like because you and i have played the original and stuff like that well the one thing the one thing they managed to do for me is they man they still managed to keep the creep factor because um i'll 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 i'll, I'll, kid, I'll kid you not um when the original dead space came out back in 08 um when, when the de original dead space came out in 08 it was at a time when i was um i was essentially like done with like survival horror games um I feel like the formula is way too stale. Like, you know, Resident Evil had done a good job. Silent Hill was also like an outlier and stuff like that. But it seemed like every other game that wanted to call itself a survival horror was just too quirky. It didn't have enough to do. And like mm -hmm. and like it leaned too he like it leaned too heavily and couldn't find a balance on one or the other. Uh, I know I say that considering that Silent Hill is just one of those movies that just designed to like to like play off your emotions, whereas Resident Evil is trying to scare you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there should have been some way to meet in the middle, and and so like I kind of fell out of love with the with survival horror games until Dead Space came along because I saw the original, I saw the trailers for the original Dead Space, and I was like, man, this is like this is like this is like pitch black. Uh, this is like not not pitch black. I'm sorry, Event Horizon meets Alien. Yeah, and I'm I'm intrigued because like Event Horizon, Alien, you know, those are two of my favorite movies. Those two of my favorite sci-fi horror movies of all time and stuff like that so i i got intrigued of course like that 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 creepy ass lullaby you know there's the sing the singing the uh, twinkle twinkle little star and stuff like that you know i was like mm, what are they going for here you know and then and then we get here and it's like man this is amazing and uh and yeah so being traumatized by the usg ishimura way back in the day and i was one of those people i wound up speed i wound up getting so playing dead space so much that i wound up speed running it you know like i could actually beat the game i could actually beat the game with one weapon uh you know in like a set amount of time and stuff like that you know and and just keep going you know and stuff like that um so like 2023 you know i haven't played dead space in forever because dead space two and three have happened by that point I haven't played that in forever and i was like man like i am not ready to go back to ishimura because i remember i remember uh i remember a certain point in other games where it was like why am i doing this again mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and so the fact that they were able to to take a veteran that 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 supposedly knew what was going on in the series you know and, and especially in this particular game and still finding a way to like basically creep me creep me the hell out you know that's a that that's that's kudos on on motive right there you know yeah because uh i'm one of those uh, i was one of those people as much as i love dead space like i i can only play this game in like chunks like like sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes i'd literally make it like from chapter to chapter and i was like i have to quit this is this is enough for me today <laughs> yeah i i would say at most i've usually did this like in a chapter or at most two chapters in a playthrough because it's like okay you know what this is uh this is enough like because yeah it, it's enough suspense uh oh. trust, yeah there's one chapter there's one chapter well, and I'll, I'll mention in our, in our spoiler discussion there's one chapter though that i i had to take just that one chapter in doses like i i, I think <laughs> I like, i'm gonna assume i know which chapter it is 
But all right, uh, so speaking of spoilers, guys, this is the part where we're going to jump into the spoiler section. So if you don't want to get spoiled like the rotten meat of this game, then we highly, highly suggest that you go and play this and then come back and check it out. But if you don't care, then you know what? Hot, you know, strap yourself in because you're in for one hell of a ride. Or, I don't know, maybe strapping yourself in. You you probably want to have some freedom to move around. You know, strapping yourself in would just make yourself very vulnerable to a necromorph at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yep. Here we go. Dead Space. Cue in a video of a uh, woman kind of telling, uh, kind of like being, hey, I miss you. I wish I could see you again. And uh, it kind of backs out, and we see a engineer who's watching this video and his crew members kind of giving him shit for watching the video for, like, the 30th time. <laughs> so, uh, that and what's cool about the remake is now the engineer can actually talk back. Yes. Yes. And kudos for Gunnar Wright for coming back to play this character. I'm 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 actually glad they actually asked him to come back. That's that that was amazing because they could have they could have literally they could have literally done, you know, like a new voice actor or whatnot, especially considering that, you know, it's, it was over it's been uh what, fifteen years? I, uh, yeah, uh Two thousand eight. Yeah, fifteen, oh, years. 15 yeah. years. Fifteen years. Yeah, they 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 could have they could have easily moved on, you know, and stuff like that. They could have been like, we'll leave all this in the past, you know, for the remake and stuff like that. So it was great. Like he's the only he's the only original voice actor that's returning. And the crazy part is, he didn't even voice Isaac in the original game. Mm hmm. Yep. He didn't have a voice until the second game. Yep. Um. But yeah. So uh, we have a group of engineers who has been responding to a call. To the USG Ishimura, uh, apparently the uh, it's a okay. The USG Ishimura is a spaceship that's known as a planet cracker. It's a mining facility that is uh, they kind of like crack, like literally crack into a planet, pull a section out, and uh, they start kind of like testing for the various minerals and stuff that they could find. You know, yeah, and the Ishimura is the. The Ishimura is the oldest planet cracker too. Like just to give you, just to give people a little bit of lore, because like there may or may not be a Dead Space Two remake. Um, uh, if Dead Space Two remake happens, or even just go play Dead Space Two, like where you, where the the events of that game takes place, it takes the the Ishimura cracked the cracked the the moon Titan of Saturn. It was the very first crack planet crack that it that the Ishimura did. So so yeah, so there you go. Like you know, well this ship has been around for like ages. <laughs> yep. And uh, so now it's at the uh, a planet called Aegis 7. And um, it's... <laughs> Aegis <laughs> nice, how Aegis. I, nice how I rolled into that, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, it, they, the, uh, the engineers are trying to hail the ship, but they're getting absolutely no response. So they are going in blind. Uh, their ship kind of gets struck a little bit as they are walking in. So there's a little bit of ship damage. They do manage to land in the hangar bay, and uh, now they can kind of go out and carry on their mission to see what's going on in the ship, why everything seems to be down, and just how far the damage has gone. But we find out very shortly that they're not alone when they enter the ship. No. The whole ship goes into a quarantine lockdown, and we get our first look and sound of a necromorph. And these things are creepy as hell. Like, how would you describe a necromorph, Laurent? Uh, basically, basically like a nightmare fuel version of like, of, honestly, honestly, a necromorph, in my opinion, would probably be like an, an, an alien version of a demon, basically, you know, <laughs> if I if I had to think about it, right, you know, because uh, and the sad part is like, there's so many types of necromorphs, like, you know, like, a, like, you know, you've got, you've got basically every necromorph is based off of off of a human off a human or humanoid body and stuff like that so like it's just it's nightmare fuel in my opinion uh mm -hmm. uh yeah uh but the slashers which are the main ones that you usually see they they've got they've got like the giant like 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 stabbing sickles or whatnot you know uh coming out of their arms and stuff like that and they're the ones that, that usually do the most work you do the most damage you know and stuff like that uh yeah but 
wow like you know like that the first the my first time seeing one of those like it was uh, back in 08 you know like it was like man like this is this is a trip yeah uh and uh that's unfortunately was uh the end of the trip for the crew member named chen yeah uh, he gets ambushed by one of the necromorphs and you see the necromorph literally impale him with both of his claws smacking him right against the window and where uh, isaac's behind <laughs> yep. isaac's safe behind a window right now where everyone else is trying to frantically get out of the room but then isaac gets ambushed and uh you get this really frantic chase scene where you have to run as fast as possible to an elevator uh to otherwise you're uh you're suffering the same fate as chen now here's now here's something in the original dead space like as he was running from the east, from the um from the hangar from the hangar deck to that first elevator mm -hmm. in the original game, like no matter what you did, you got you you got hit at least twice from or from from the necromorphs that were chasing you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. In the Dead Space remake, you can actually make it to the elevator without getting a single hit. Like yeah. yeah, he stumbles and stuff when they explode out of the vents and stuff like that, but you can you can actually not get hit. Yeah, I think uh, I think I noticed that too. Like. I was by the door when uh, when it finally opened so that I could get out uh, and out of the way of the very first necromorph and then just kind of made it to the elevator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now you are stuck on the Ishimura with uh, your companions all kind of scattered. And now your first job is to get a tram working so that you guys can all get back to the hangar bay um, and then get the hell out of there because why would you want to stick around a ship full of aliens that just kind of want to kill you? Dem mm -hmm. Demonic aliens. So, uh, which this at is this point, which at this point, like they're still putting two and two together. Like Kendra, Kendra notes that, you know, they're wearing the uniforms of the crew. Mm hmm. And they're like, no, we don't know anything just yet. And, you know, let's, uh, let's step one. Let's get the ship out of lockdown and, you know, we'll make it back to our ship um so this kind of gives you your first taste of the missions of um using things like the stasis mode um the stasis mode which kind of freezes things in place and uh, you get to use those in cool little puzzles such as uh, getting a broken tram off of the rails and putting a new one in but the machines are kind of broken as well so you had to stasis so it had time to like grab the tram out of the the pod yeah by the way by the way that right there is your first taste of like how the sound design of the game is going is going to be because mm -hmm. like yeah like it's for real like moving machinery around someplace you know like it like uh, like the the heavy equipment moving around drowns out all the other sound and and of course like of course, like, you know, all that noise you're causing is just stirring stuff up. <laughs> yep. As you uh, finish the repairs and as the new one's being uh, moved in, you, of course, are am. This is like the very first big ambush of necromorphs where you're just by yourself and you have to get, you know, tackle them. Oh, we missed something. We missed something. We, we missed uh, we, we missed the very we missed the very first clue of how to deal with these things. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so after we're so, busy, Isaac... <laughs> we're so busy talking about how uh, like them trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> yep. Uh, after Isaac gets off the elevator, you get your week or you get to know what exactly just attacked you and how you are supposed to attack them with a very classic message written in blood on a wall saying, what does it say? Cut off their limbs. Cut off their limbs. That's right. This is a game where headshots don't really matter much. You can knock off a head of one of these things and they will still keep and on will, coming. And it will piss them off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, you need to cut off the limbs. Like most slashers, once you get them down to two limbs, they're very easy to pick off. But uh, you, you usually have to take off at least two to three limbs of most of these things. Yeah. Or 75% of their limbs with ones that have more limbs or less. Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, we finally fixed the tram and your friends uh, go off without you. Uh, and they say, well, you know what? The quarantine's probably fixed. You could probably just go out the same way you came, you know, came in and uh, let the, uh, let 
let the person who stayed behind in the shuttle know that uh everything's fucked up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is weird. Like how come they can talk to each other but they can't reach like they can't reach their own ship? I know. Well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the way the uh, well, that's the, that's the one cool thing about the design of the Eastern Mirror uh, in the Dead Space remake. They actually made it make sense this time. Like 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 the entire the entire design of the, of the Eastern Mirror is 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 linear in 3D now. So you can so they they basically designed it to where every every corridor connects to each other and all that stuff now. So. Mm-hmm. So basically what kept Kendra and Hammond from from just getting back to Isaac is the fact that they were they ran around the opposite side uh, so like they want somehow they wound up on the other side of the tram tracks. <laughs> yeah, well, somehow. yeah. I mean they were still you were on one side of that security uh door. Yeah. And they and, were on the other side. So they, they ran and they ran through honestly honestly thinking about the map now they ran back through the hangar bay. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. They ran back through the hangar bay, so they're actually lucky to be alive by the time like Isaac is able to communicate with them. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, why weren't they able to communicate with the ship though? Because then they start That's having true. those like That's communications. True. It's like if they can hail each other and the ship isn't that far, why couldn't they just like be like, "Hey, get that ship fixed up as fast as you can, and we need to get the fuck out of here." Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Well. I don't know. Like, uh, I guess my head cannon is saying because, like, once they step foot onto the Eastern Mura, their their rigs synced up to the Eastern Mura, you know. So that's the only thing I can think of. Like, you know, even though they could just have walkie talkies or something like that, you know, or or you know, like I'm I'm a nerd, so like what you know, like com badges or whatever from Star Trek or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> like they should have some still yeah. some connection. It's like Sig- like smoke signals or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> Let homegirl back in the shuttle know. Hey, shit's fucked. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you know we gotta have the plot happen. So uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know you uh, make it back to the ship, and um, so the necromorphs are there. <laughs> yep, the necromorphs decide that they too are at the ship, and they uh, hit a very very crucial part. Of the ship that makes the whole thing blow up. Go figure. Yeah. So now your only exit is gone. And you're stuck in a ship full of hundreds of crazy demonic aliens that want to slice your face off. And give you limbs. More limbs. <laughs> um, so now we're up to the next part. You uh, get a call saying, hey, um, we need to get the captain's ID or the captain's rig and able to um, kind of get the diagnostics of what's going on with the ship. Figure out, figure out the ship. Yeah. So, but the last reported uh, location was he was located in the morgue. So he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, I love that. I love how that conversation they're like, they're like, yeah, we just have to find the captain. And they're like, they're like, they're like looking at the manifest. It's like, okay, here's the captain's name uh, his location. They're like, says says he's deceased and, you know like you can you can just you can just feel everybody's heart sink <laughs> it's like okay far so far we know that just about as far as we know no one's alive right now and if the captain's dead then that means the ship is really in chaos um so they send isaac to go to the medical facility to f- get the rig and maybe find out more about nicole because that's where nicole would be working she's uh She's a doctor. Chief medical officer. Mm-hmm. And so you do that. And the morgue has, uh, it's very interesting. It kind of gives you the mission structure of how a lot of these missions um, work, where you have to go and, like, get a piece from one section of that, like, area, get another piece from a different section, combine them in some way, and, you know, go to, like, one more final section. Um, but we, uh, we definitely run into a lot of necromorphs in this. Yeah. Like, and- this is one that, this is one, like the major ambush points when you wouldn't it was, like going through, the, going through the medical bay. Well, going actually getting to the medical bay, because like you wind up going through, you wind up going through uh it's not Ky- or cryo. Um, it's basically, it's basically There's where all the exam rooms are. Yeah. The, uh, there was a research wing. Yes. And then there was uh like imaging. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's imaging. Yeah, like imaging is like one of the major, major like 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 ambush points because like because like you have to you start on the top floor of imaging, you have to go down to the mm -hmm. bottom floor. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys! Like, what the hell? Yep, and you know you're about to get ambushed because all of a sudden a uh, uh, voice comes out and says uh, contamination, um, quarantine alert, quarant. Yeah, basically all the shutters come down. You're locked in a room and you're forced to fight everything that decides to crawl through a vent. Now Usually here's, behind you. <laughs> yeah. Now here's the cool thing because wait, uh, wait, we don't have no, we don't have we don't have kinesis yet. Yeah. We, so we we don't know about this trick yet. Uh, so I'm not I'm not I'm not going to jump ahead just yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so one of the first things we had to do is we had to find a uh, shock pads. I believe was what we were finding in imaging. Yeah, because um, the morgue is actually blocked up by a whole bunch of debris like the, the whoever was in medical before, like made sure that morgue was very off limits to people or things to come out of the morgue. Makes sense. Makes sense. Knowing what we know, like necromorph necromorphs are spawned off of, off the dead and stuff like that. So, yeah, barricading barricading medical was the best thing that somebody could have done at that point. <laughs> mm hmm. Do you think that was uh, Dr. Nicole or uh, Dr. Cl uh, Kine? I'm, I'm going to say Dr. Kine because, like, eventually we find out that Nicole is kind of, like, off on her own adventure because, like, she's trying to – you and you wind up getting – you wind up hear, hearing this in actual – chapter two like you wind up you wind up starting to learn that you know she's trying to figure out what start the necromorphs whereas whereas her other her fellow medical officers are kind of up to no good doing something else yeah we uh we get a, a few names get dropped in this uh the names being of course nicole uh captain matthias who um is the captain of the ship uh dr mercer who mm -hmm. is a uh you kind of already guess um just from the first just from the name just from the name yeah. mercer come on mm -hmm. <laughs> like th th this is probably a bad guy uh, chalice mercer even yeah but. like that if that don't sound like he twirls mustaches <laughs> <laughs> yep and then we also get dr kine who you know kind of seems like he was somewhere in the middle um we also learn about a group called the unitologists yeah yeah, that's right. That's right. Because in this chapter, you wind up in Doctor Kine's office, and you see him, and you see a holographic recording of him and, and him, of him and the captain talking about stuff, and and basically Kine is saying whatever went on, whatever went on, was there, whatever's happening on the planet, whatever happened on the planet before we got here is happening on the ship, and but. But you can tell that the captain, Captain Matthias, is all about. Well, hey, we just found the discovery that we were looking for for like an e for like you know like since the civilization you know was birthed and stuff like that. So he's worried about his ambitions, and we do start hearing about unitology, and we actually see like there's an actual like in the holographic reproduction, we actually see a, 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 a recreation of, the, of of a marker, mm -hmm, like a little uh, but, a little standy. But guess. at this point, but at this point, we don't know that. We don't know what markers are at this point. Nope. What we do know at this point is that there have been some incidences going on, one on the planet, and then carrying on from the ship of people starting to get headaches. And uh, I guess uh, dis they start to become disillusioned and start seeing things that aren't really there. Yeah, the major the major symptoms the major symptoms of like some of this contamination are are the headaches, uh, the the inability to sleep. So basically, in basically like 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 hard insomnia, basically the inability to sleep. Uh, some people are also starting to like some people are also starting to like see things that you know are not there, whether it be like people or or events that they've known or or stuff that just does not make any sense to begin with, stuff like that. You know, so you've got you've got hallucinations, you've got onsets of dementia and things of that nature you know and uh and at this point like nobody knows what it is you know but they also know that it also happened on the planet so they're thinking of viral contagion or something they're not thinking mm -hmm. you know something more something insidious yeah but so uh right now it's kind of a stalemate of like aborting the mission the captain and, and dr mercer of course are like nope keep at it and dr kind kind is kind of like i don't know if i fully agree with this and nicole's like no 
you guys no, are... there's a there's a medical reason <laughs> yeah. nicole's like there's a medical reason this shit's happening <laughs> yep and she wants to find out what it is and oh and, and nicole's also anti-unitology so the only person she really trusts is dr kine because she doesn't know that dr kine is a unitologist but she knows mm-hmm. but she knows mercer and matthias are unitologists yep and uh she she knows a few i think she a few of the crew she might know i don't know if she really interacted but there are a few people like uh jacob that, temple. Knew, that knew who she was yeah that knew yeah. who she was um yeah and, temple and cross dr yeah. cross and you know dr cross is she's she's science not uh not medical yeah she's science and she has more of a more her stations more in the hydroponics and making sure that the ishimura has a good food source yeah um but we're kind of jumping ahead there. We are. We are. Um, yeah. Well, we, we're just we're just we're yep. just getting the we're just getting the cast out. That's all. Like I think I think we got everybody. Like Isaac, Nicole, Kendra, Zach. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Hammond. I'm sorry. Uh, Doctor Mercer, Doctor Kine, Doctor Elizabeth Cross. Which Elizabeth Cross actually played a big part in this game, considering that she was only just a name mentioned in the original game. Yep, that is very very true. Like I def- there's definitely a twist at the end where she yeah. plays a part of um there's also i think they mentioned someone i forget what his first name but i think the last name's harris and we find out a little bit more about him he's kind of like he's kind of like patient zero in a sense like one of the first ones that started getting the hallucinations and stuff and he's also dr mercer's like he's also that and he gets the he gets the attention of dr mercer you know yeah originally a patient of dr nicole uh, but then Dr. Mercer, he overrides her. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you eventually get yourself into the morgue and you find, uh, you find Captain Matthias's body. And, uh, as you're going, you also, or after you get the rig, you also start finding out what's causing the necromorphs to actually what creates them, what creates mm-hmm. them and enter the infector, which is like a, Face, uh, face hugger version of a bat. That's say. true. <laughs> I, uh, you, you, you know for sh- you know for sure. Like Alien, Alien was an inspiration for this game. You know for sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But you know what? You know what though? Like, okay, so here's one of the standout differences between Dead Space the original and Dead Space the remake. In the original game, like you actually you actually witnessed the um the the infector doing its thing from behind like plexiglass. Uh you see it actually go through and you act and it gets it gets to to Captain Matthias's body and turns him into a not just a necromorph, but one of those super necromorphs, the ones that are black and are super strong and, and you yep. know will will mow you down really quickly. Whereas in the Dead Space remake, I, I really love this. The fact that, you know, like Isaac actually gets to go into the room where the, where the, where the captain's body is at. And as he's trying to remove the rig from his body, the infector shows up. And what's kind of wild about this is the infector shows up. It actually knocks him off for a second. And then he goes after the body. <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 um, knows and, what it's doing. He needs a dead thing, not a live yeah. thing. Yeah, even though the infectors, the infectors can fight you, they will fight you eventually when you when you run across them. But you know, I guess it's like you know the law, the laws of attraction. You know, is like if I make if I make this killing machine, it'll kill him, and then I can make another killing machine. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know what? Infectors are a pain in the ass too because they are very yeah. mobile. Um, yeah. And you want to take them out first because chances are, if there's an infector in the room. There's a couple dead bodies that There's, that thing is going yeah. to go for. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So here's a pro. Here's a pro tip for everybody. For anybody who's ever played that 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 has not played Dead Space and wanted to play it after listening to this uh, listening to this uh, podcast, if you if you come across a room with dead bodies in it, just curb stomp them. Curb stomp them until limbs fall off of them. And guess what? The infectors may show up, but they can't do anything with them. So all you have to deal with is an infector and not like five necromorphs and an infector. <laughs> It's also a good thing because uh, to curve stomp them because sometimes the necromorphs also like to play dead. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you find yeah. that out early in chapter two. <laughs> yep. So you eventually uh, you eventually get the rig. Uh, Isaac ex- explains how these things are uh, being created right now. Um, let's see. Does what was on what happens on Kendra's and Hammond's side? Did they find Kendra? Kendra at this point, Kendra has has managed to hide out in the um in the um in the server room. 
That's right. So she's she's safe. She says she can hear them all around her, but they don't know that she's there. She's safe. Hammond is Hammond has already made his way up to the bridge, mm-hmm. and at and during that time, he says he believes that he's being followed by what looks like Chen. Okay, that's right. So he was he was aware that he thinks he sees Chen. Yeah. Uh, so now you're finally you got your credentials, and now it's finally time for you to go on to engineering and figure out just what is wrong with oh, the, the ship. Oh, that's right, because the because the orbit is decaying, and they need to bring the engines back online. That's right. Before Isaac can come to the bridge, he needs to get the engines back online. Hammond, because Hammond's already in the bridge, and he's already seen that, and he's like, "Okay, you need to go to engineering real quickly because like the last asteroid to hit us is is knocked us into the planet, it knocked us out of orbit." And we're sinking down to the planet. <laughs> yeah, so we won't even have time to escape right now unless, like, we, we save. get the ship right. <laughs> yep. So Isaac goes down to engineering, and uh, he finds out that the – oh, this is one of the big parts that differs from the original is how you get to engineering. A lo- In the original, it was all about the tram, you know, taking you from place to place. In yeah. the remake, however, the tram you is – always take the now. tram. Yep. Yeah, you don't you don't always take the tram <laughs> sometimes. And and oh, that was a cool thing, too. Sometimes the tram corridors like, OK, like if Medical Bay was literally upstairs, like from engineering, uh, from engineering. So you literally walked down to engineering. Like you didn't even take the tram that time. Well, you had to get to the hangar bay. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually above that's very close to the hangar bay. Uh, you open up the bay doors, which allows you to kind that's of fly right. out you know, That's further, right. and then you go down the broken elevator shaft using yeah. zero G. This is like the, one of the first major times you get to play around with the zero G. Yeah. Like there was a little bit in the hospital oh, wing. Uh, oh, um, and by the way, fighting Necromorphs in zero G is not fun. I, it, 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 it was never fun in the first game. It was not fun in the sequels and it is not fun in this game, <laughs> but it's not fun in this game because like they got physics, right? Motive got the physics, right? In this game. Mm-hmm. And of course it's space. You don't hear anything in space. They oh, can't yeah. hear you scream. And yeah. that means you also can't hear the monster scream either as it comes flying at you. Mm-hmm. You just got to understand that if you're in zero G, there is a chance that there's going to be two different types of necromorphs out there with you at, at any time. Yeah. Usually if it's something that you have like some sort of process you have to do in zero G, you can always expect they will have a show. Leapers. Up. Yep. You got the leapers and yep. you got the, uh, the stalkers. Yeah. Uh, which are these little kitty like things oh, huh, huh, huh. let's let's wait let's wait till we get back to medical bay because that's when we first meet them <laughs> uh, okay well we're kind, we're kind of done with medical bay so i well, uh, well we go back oh. after 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 dealing with everything on the bridge no oh, we met we met them the first time we're in medical bay was that okay yeah you know we, what yeah, yeah we, well, I do. Well, I do remember the scene where, like, you, you the guy behind the wall, and 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 he, home he's dude banging like, on the wall, and then yeah, the, he gets he gets speared against the wall, and then his head gets gets just popped off. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's in that room full of the fetuses. Uh, yeah. Which, why do they have like a hundred fetuses on this sh- mining ship? Actually, okay, so like this is me knowing some of the dead space lore because uh because. Number one, the Eastern Mur. Not only is the Eastern Mur the oldest plant cracker like in existence, you know, at this time in the fleet and stuff like that. It's also it's also like overrun by unitologists, you know. Like as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, cor- corrupt elements in the government because like you you learn eventually uh, through through dead through dead space through actually this game that you've got EarthGov that's trying to keep everything together and you got the unitologists who are trying to who are trying to bring on this thing called convergence and stuff like that. Yep. So like powers corrupt powers wound up getting into where two thirds of the crew of the Ishimura are unitologists and stuff like that. So they're using they're using a, a prestigious ship like the Ishimura to like do their own bidding and stuff like that. So one of the things that's going on, and this is this answers the question of why like they had these babies and like and like vats and stuff like that. That's they're doing illegal. They're doing illegal cloning operations. Uh, it's it's illegal because like number one they're they're harvesting stem cells to make to make fetuses but mm-hmm. these are designed to like for example when people have like horrendous accidents where they lose an arm or a leg or whatnot this is how they regrow those this is how they regrow those parts and stuff like that but it's illegal through EarthGov so and this is also why the Eastern Mura is only ass in the space 
Got it. Man, yeah. we're, yeah. we're really learning about the corruption. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, I, like, like, I, I, I feel like I should be living. In, well, I don't want to live in that universe. But. <laughs> <laughs> I am there. No, no, I don't want to be there. <laughs> no, no, no. There's way too much stuff out there for me. Like once you, once you learn about how these things really started, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I would off myself, but I already know what would happen if I do that. <laughs> Just make sure to cut off the limbs first. <laughs> which, which, yeah, by the, which, which, by the way, which, by the way, Isaac stumbles across a, uh, an audio log of a guy that actually did that. He figured he yeah. figured out what's going, on. and it's actually in engineering too. He figured mm -hmm. out he figured out what what happens, how they how they become, and he's like, "Oh, there's no way in hell," you know. It's like, oh, like, why did the guy just like keep the log running, like? He, he make he makes it like okay I I'm gonna have to do the hard choice and cut off my limbs, and then all you know it's like he just keeps it running, and then you start hearing him screaming and he's like yeah oh god okay let's do another one ah! now, now here's my thing now here's my thing that that shows that shows determination because like I think I think if I'm not mistaken like the human body can only take but so much pain before you pass out so the mm -hmm. fact that he was able to get three limbs off. <laughs> before finally like doing like doing him doing himself and stuff like that you know it's like geez man i feel like that i feel like honestly that dude would have been a survivor <laughs> if he if he had that much constitution to like lop off three limbs on his own and still was able to like to like put the gun up to his head and kill himself and stuff like that you know uh i feel like he could just he probably would just fought his way off the ishimura without doing all that it's it's possible, but you know what? I don't think there was a hell of a lot of it's, hope on that Ishimura. And it sounds like he was using a plasma cutter too, so it, it doesn't sound like he was using one of the exotic weapons. <laughs> I thought he was using one of the saw blades. It sounded like a saw blade. I'm gonna have to listen to I'm gonna have to listen to the log again. I don't know. It, it it sounded like sawing, but if if it was a saw blade, there's no way in hell I I couldn't have done that. I I couldn't have done that to myself. <laughs> mm hmm. But all right, uh, so we're in engineering right now. We find out that there's uh, no fuel going to the engine. It's been yep. sabotaged. And so you have to first reconnect uh, the fuel lines. Fuel <laughs> it's actually been, it's been it's been sabotaged by a guy that, you know, like after he after he sabotaged the ship, went insane and ran his own head into a bulkhead and killed himself. <laughs> yep. It's like it's like, why would you do that? Because he th didn't think he didn't want the ship to uh, keep moving, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So you have to start the engines. Oh, you meet you meet a you meet a brand new mech necromorph while you're starting the engines too. You you meet the uh, the pregnant ne necromorphs. Yep. Uh, shoot, I forget what they're called. I think they're called pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's a very fat necromorph uh, that if you were to shoot anything other than the limbs. It all of a sudden releases little tiny spider uh, swarmers. The swarmers are what the little ones are called, and uh, you, 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 they're very hard to kill with normal weapons. You almost have to use the flamethrower for those. Um, but yeah, so uh, you you set the fuel lines together. Uh, and this oh, they're is, actually called pregnants. They're called pregnants. <laughs> pregnants are specialized necromorphs. They are named due to the enormous sac that extrudes from the abdominal area. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, considering yeah, don't these, and don't don't shoot them in the belly. Yeah, don't shoot. <laughs> if you do, you know, make sure you have your flamethrower like immediately on hand to uh, counteract the after effects of that. Yeah, because if not, you wind up getting getting swarmed by the swarmers. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Original names. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's fits their descriptions quite well. Uh, so, yep, you uh, fuel the ship, and you eventually get the engines. Uh, you get the engine running. Hammond's able to fix the decaying orbit. Do you do that? Do you get the centrifuge running first, or the engine? You get the centri the centrifuge the centrifuge first. Because okay. the centrifuge, the centrifuge controls gravity, which 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 the engine needs. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm like thinking the engine was like the last part of. But. Yeah, yeah, the centrifuge, and oh my god, like talk about talk about thinking fast and being quick in the centrifuge room. Yep. The 
that's like one of those like creepy technological horror moments where uh, yeah. the thing starts uh, swinging around, but the way that you have to get back to you the have exit, to, you have to run towards it. <laughs> yep, and you have to do it precisely; otherwise, it hits you and you blow up into little meaty chunks. What I do love, what I do love, is stasis and necromorphs right as that arm is coming around. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's fun, especially when you see them coming out of the vents too. Just before, yeah. <laughs> it's like, bye. Oh, and oh, and I'm glad Isaac can run and shoot in this game because he could not. Because he could not do it. He could not do it in the original Dead Space. Dead Space Two and Three, he could. The original Dead Space, he could not. Wait, no, I'm sorry. He could run and shoot in, in this game, but he couldn't stasis and shoot. At he couldn't stasis. Like we had to stand still for a second to do stasis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, you mixed it up a little bit with uh, Resident Evil Four there. Yeah, Resident Evil Four. Yeah, the original, the original Resident Evil Four, you couldn't run and shoot. I remember that. that. That was one of the major. That was one of the major gripes that that uh, that Schofield had. You know, when he created Dead Space. You know, he was like, he was like, this uh, Resident Evil Four would be perfect if you could run and shoot. Yep. All right, so we turn on the engines and we finally get the ship back into orbit, and uh, we get, of course, another wonderful call. Uh, from Hammond. Actually, he just says, you know what? Get to the bridge now. You're good. And so you go back to the bridge, but uh, I think while you're on the tram to the bridge, something hits the ship. Something and, hits, yeah. And, like, the, sh- the ship shakes and everyone's like, what the hell was that? And it's like, oh, we're, uh, we're in a meteor field, or an asteroid field, and uh, we have no guns. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's like one thing after another after another. It's like these guys probably should yeah. have just like given up and just died. But yeah, but this is cool though because it actually gives you it actually gives you your first excuse to be on the skin of the ship. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so we finally make it to the bridge, and uh, when we are walking to the bridge, all of a sudden the hallway that we're in, full of glass windows gets shattered by something really freaking huge. And we finally meet what that very freaking huge thing is when we get to the very big bridge of the ship. By the way, by the way, uh here's another here's another here's another pro tip. Like after you see all the all the glass like crumble in that in that in that corridor, don't walk close to a window. <laughs> you will get smacked. <laughs> Aww. But you have to like see it, you know. It's like fire damage. Like no, you, can still, no, you can still see it, but just don't walk so close to it. You're gonna get smacked. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the whole part of the experience. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like putting your eye on the like in the hole, like when there's that like glory hole like shape somewhere in if, a wall. If, <laughs> if anyone's ever seen a spy movie, you know exactly what's gonna happen when you when you put your eye up to the peephole. <laughs> Or if you even seen Pearl, mm, mm, not mm, Pearl mm. Uh, X X. I know, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Yeah, let's look at uh, the hole yeah. and uh, then get hit with the pitchfork. There yeah, but you, yeah. So yeah, we make it to the bridge and um and and once you go downstairs, like as soon as the door opens, Hammond almost shoots you <laughs> because he just got attacked by Necromorph Chin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he managed to get Chin moved into an escape pod and stuff like that, but he's just like transfixed by it. And you know, I didn't realize this until my second playthrough of the, of the remake that Hammond at this point is actually suffering from the effects of what whatever else is happening on the Ishimura because the fact that he's just standing there transfixed about the fact that neck that you know Chin is there, but he's not seeing the necromorph Chin. He's seeing Chin. <laughs> True, you know. Yeah, I, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, because Isaac is the one that had to tell him, like, "Hey, like, there's something you can do for him. Like, he's done <laughs> and stuff like that." And it snaps Hammond out of it for a second, you know. So like, just, just let it go, you know. And so Hammond shoots off, uh, shoots Chen off into space, and we never hear from Chen ever, ever, ever again. So we think. <laughs> <laughs> da da da. All right, yeah. So, uh, so we're in the we're on the bridge now. Hammond, Hammond, Hammond's actually been able to correct the ship and everything, but because the ship is like in the middle of the asteroid field that was caused by the planet crack and stuff like that, he he tasks he tasks Isaac with, uh, hey, we got to do some, we got to fix the ADS cannons. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, 
And this is the nice little twist because like in the original game, the ADS cannons was basically just like a, a game of like freaking space invaders. Like you, you're manning some cannons and you're shooting things in space and you're shooting the asteroids in space, trying to keep them from shooting the ship, from hitting the ship and stuff like that. But this, this is the cool thing this time, which um, as, as Isaac goes on his way back up, uh, cause he has to go back up to the bridge and through one of the side corridors, the thing that smashed every window in the hallway shows up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like a brute and basically, okay. So a brute basically is like, just think of a gorilla form. If a gorilla form of all the necromorphs fused into one thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and they're not unkillable, but they, they are tanky and you, and like just knowing how to kill them is makes it easy. Like oh, basically yeah. the best thing to do, like stasis, get they're, behind they're- them, start, start plowing. They're like one of the most easiest necromorphs to get once you know exactly how to kill them. Yeah. Like just yeah. space this, go behind, pops around. In the early things, you'll have to do at least twice. But, you know, once you get stronger weapons towards the end, you can literally kill them in like one stasis and walk around. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so now Isaac is, um, so now Isaac's on a, on a, on a mission to like, uh, to like, to like, to like, save the ship from yep. the asteroids and stuff like that. So, so once he gets outside the outside the Eastern Moon and stuff like that, like he's like, "Oh, I have a I have a wonderful idea. Like, why don't I just sync why don't I just sync up my my rig to the targeting sensors of the of, of the ADS cannons and then like it gives us enough time to a- adjust and adapt and then it will start doing it on its own. But you had to do but you had to at least sync up three of them, three of the cannons to make it all work uh work correctly and stuff like that. So yep. that's a cool thing. But the problem is like you're on the skin of the ship, like Necromorphs will attack you, and you could get hit by an asteroid. <laughs> and you <laughs> technically had a time limit because the ship had health. Uh, and uh, yeah, in bla- oh, one of the cool things about this oh. is once you get oh, and you need oxygen, you need oxygen also. Yeah, of course, you need oxygen too. Uh, one of the cool things, though, is that once you sink up to a cannon, like you can walk on the ship and then aim, like point your gun at the asteroid. and the cannon will shoot it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was that was that was that was really that was really amazing how they did that because because in the original Dead Space it was. It was one of the things that people complained about the most. Even the seasoned players, like I myself, like I was like, I understand why this is here, but come on, <laughs> that game was hard. And the fact that yeah. if you and lost- there was there, there was a there was an achievement behind it too. Like you had to you, you had to you had to, you had to do it without the ship falling below eighty percent to get the achievement. And here's the thing about it, you had to do it twice. <laughs> yep. you had to do it twice so even so the first time you did it you didn't get the, you don't get the trophy of the achievement you had you had to, you had to get it both times yep because it kind of happened again at a later part but uh, yeah that, that's a little different and they also changed that scene as well in the game but uh yeah uh you finally get this asteroid or the auto guns to finally shoot the asteroids and now everything is just kosher and you like all the systems are good right they're, they're perfect. And uh, then you Hammond get... Tells you, Hammond tells you to come back to the ship because he just found the Coles rig. <laughs> yep. And uh, also there's like some sort of signal going on in the medical um, facility. where which she's, which she's close by to. <laughs> yep. In fact, it's a message of her saying, hey, survivors, if you're a survivor, come down to the medical facility. We'll yep. take care of you. It's a sanctuary there we'll all be made whole. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 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 okay. So this is, so this is up to chapter five right now, by this point, by this point, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts overall about how, how the game is going? I just think it's like one bad thing after another. It's like, I just want to get off the ship and I can't because this is happening and that's happening. And we can't even have a moment to breathe because if we do, then it's like, something else is going to break on the ship like it's, yeah it's the most serious it's the most series of unfortunate events that i've ever seen you know but then again like it wouldn't be a video game without that <laughs> mm-hmm. but i i think the next chapter is probably my least favorite of all the products no uh the next chapter is the oh, medical bay again. Medical bay. yeah the second trip to the medical bay because yep. now like you know oh yeah this, oh yeah they introduced something that i absolutely despised in this game now you know what I thought was really cool about that though, like your first interaction with Doctor Mercer, you know, mm-hmm. actually, 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 he talks to you over your rig 
first. Yep. And then when you actually meet the guy for real, like this guy has this guy has his own little magic trick. Like uh, like he's he throw, he puts you into stasis. And it's crazy because you can you can basically like I guess like like use use Isaac's eyes to see what's going on around you, but you cannot move. And this guy this guy has this if you didn't know this guy was a bad guy at this point, he has a monologue while you're frozen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, uh you you find out like when you come back to the medical bay there's a hell of a lot of like body ba- or I, no, not body bags. They're patients tied up in gurneys. Like yeah, still alive with and you know like and it's obvious that they're they're being experimented on. And there's even one person. And there's actually no no no. It's not until after you. It's not until after your encounter with with Mercer that you find that you find another person that tells you something. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, but the one yeah, so so like while Mercer's monologuing, you come to find out that Mercer's lost all respect for Doctor Kine. You know, um, uh, he's lost all respect for Doctor Kine. Oh, and you know what we? Oh, you know what we just? I just realized we missed we we missed telling people how like how like the captain wound up in in in, in the morgue because <laughs> we because we see a because we see the video log of what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, um, while we were in the bridge, we see a video log of uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Kine and Mercer, uh, not Mercer, um, Matthias, and 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 the first officer, like a couple of the bridge officers, including the executive officer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're having an argument, and and, uh, and Matthias has like lost his mind. <laughs> uh huh, and he kind of starts attacking, or like charges after Kine, and Kine shoots him accidentally. Actually, no, actually, actually, no. He was trying to sedate him, oh, and uh, and uh, and and the captain lunged at him, and and the and the syringe went into his eyeball socket. That's right. Okay, That's right. which is which is wild. Now we think about it because we we know how you get the marker signal in future games. We we know we learn how you get the marker signal out of somebody who's been infected. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Good old callback. To a future game, I don't think they. I don't think they knew about it. In 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 no way, I don't think they realized that was what they were going to do. <laughs> so when Dead Space Two came out, like uh, you know, and it's funny, I didn't even think about it until until just now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stick a needle in your eye. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. So it. So yeah. So so yeah. So so at this point, back to back to Isaac being like held in stasis by Dr. Dr. Mercer. Dr. Mercer lets, lets you know that he's lost all respect for, for, for kind and that, um, and that Nicole has been avoiding him has been, has, has been avoiding him. And, uh, and, uh, and that, you know, like the, and like the captain was led astray by his own ambitions and stuff like that, you know, whereas, whereas Mercer has been the only one that's been sticking to unitology. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, he kind of gives you an ultimatum, like stay out of my way. Uh, you continue your course to chase him down, and that's when he releases the Kraken or the Hunter. The Hunter. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He releases the Hunter, which is a necromorph that does not die. It has a special ability to regenerate cut off limbs. By the way, by the way, like these are like the bane of the existence in, in the entire Dead Space franchise. Like you like every game has every game has one of these guys, at least one mm-hmm. <laughs> Dead Space had had only one Dead Space 2 had two of them. <laughs> Dead Space 3 had a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I mean, I get the idea of like you want to run away from them. But like the thing about the hunters, the hunter regenerated pretty damn fast. And yeah. like was relentless and almost always had at least like three other necromorphs like around it at the same time. So mm-hmm. it's like it, it, it was almost impossible to avoid. Um, so the hunter kind of chases you down until you finally get into uh, uh, cryogenics. Yeah. And, uh, you you kind of have a miniature like boss fight with the hunter. You have to figure out how to kill it. Well, not necessarily kill it, but how to, to stop it, disable it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we get this cool little uh, like battle arena, and the idea is you want to put the hunter in the cryogenics tube, 
disable it, stasis the shit out of it, so that and then you can, freeze it. Yep, run to the control room and freeze the freeze. And it. you know, you know what's wild about that? What's wild about that, right? Is because you get locked in the room because like the Ishimura is like is like quarantine, right? It's like the Ishimura is waiting for you to do all the work because once you actually activate the cryo, the cor- the, the the Ishimura moves it, and then all of a sudden quarantine's lifted. <laughs> Yep. It's like, what the? It's like, well, why couldn't you have done that all along, ship? <laughs> it's like, I, I didn't want to do it. That's your job. <laughs> yep. So you finally, uh, you do that. And uh, now it's like, okay, that, that obviously turned out to be a dead end. We didn't find Nicole. We found some other crazy nut out there. Um, <laughs> so Looking like, what's, what's next? Well, we find out that uh, the something is poisoning the air on the ship. <laughs> Everyone's going to die here soon because they can't breathe good oxygen. Like, what the, like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. well, before we can figure out how to get off this ship, we need now breathable air. So, yeah, I can't remember. I get, I, was it Kendra that rerouted people? Yeah, Kendra, Kendra brought it to the attention. Yeah. Yeah, because she's still she's still she's still locked into the system. Because I'm not sure if she's moved out of the server room at that point. She didn't she didn't say if she was still in the server room, but uh, at that point, but she did say, "Hey, like, hey, like, whatever, whatever you think is going on, whatever you think is important, is not important because we're gonna run out of oxygen real soon here." Yeah, and throughout the last few missions, we also kind of get her suspicion that she feels that they weren't there on a routine. Uh, repair. Yeah, the, yeah, the Ishimura. Well, the Ishimura wasn't there, you know, just to crack a planet. Um, but also, she's starting to suspect that Hammond knows something because Hammond's Hammond's EarthGov. It, but here's something that's interesting about that: Hammond's EarthGov. Kendra is also EarthGov, but Kendra is throwing the throwing the suspicion onto onto Hammond. Like Hammond is the is the is the bad guy here. Yep. I mean, she uh, she knew how to play. Uh, she knew how to play the game. Like she figured the engineer would probably be the more helpful one, or maybe she yeah. realized that Hammond was uh, already going crazy when he, you know, was spotting Chen. By the way, by the way, like in the original Dead Space, I didn't like Kendra one bit. I did not yeah. like her one bit. But in this game, like I feel like I feel like the way that she was portrayed and, and how and how the uh, and how the the talent acted her, it made me respect her. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought every single character in this game was an insufferable asshole, even Isaac, <laughs> <laughs> including Isaac, including Isaac. I'm like, you know what? There are no redeemable features on any of these people, and they can all just die. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, they did. <laughs> We're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> all right, yeah. So, so, so Isaac, Isaac winds up in hydroponics, and and as soon as he enter hydroponics, okay. First of all, this scared the shit out of me because number one, it was different from the original game. Yep. You you walk around a corner, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this person runs out, <laughs> runs out from the from the from the opposite end, and I'm like, whoa, whoa! Like I pull, I pull, I pull my weapon out, about to shoot them, and it's it like is a holographic representation of Doctor Elizabeth Cross, uh, who at this point, who up up at this point, we didn't even know was actually. I don't think no, Doctor Cross had at this point, Doctor Cross. You heard one one audio log. She was trying to find Jacob Temple. Yep, uh, and we heard the temple logs actually while we were in engineering. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, because temple because temple left a message for her. Like if 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 you if you get this, meet us down in engineering. We're 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 corn we're we're barricaded in engineering. Meet us down there and stuff like that. So yeah, so so Doctor Cross has recorded a message letting anyone know that enters hydroponics. Like hey, like if you enter hydroponics, it's it's a death sentence because uh, because there's something there's something inside hydroponics that's been poisoning the air and it's eventually going to poison the entire ship and stuff like that. You know, um, mm-hmm. and and so like and so Isaac Isaac goes forward and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah. And as um and as he gets started, like actually trying to like figure out what's going on with hydroponics, he actually gets a communique from from Dr. Cross. And she's and um and they have a quick conversation and and uh she's like, Okay, she's like, um, I'm looking for Jacob Temple, and he's like, I'm looking for Nicole Brennan. And they're like, Okay, she's like, Well, I I know she's a medical officer, and last I saw she was so and so. Uh, but what are you about to do? And he's like, I'm trying to fix the air and stuff like that. So she starts helping him out, like telling him what to do and stuff like that. Yep. So, uh, so he's got an alliance. Yep. Now to fix the air, they have to create an enzyme, which of course you mean, which means, oh, you need to go look for an item, but surprise, surprise, you actually already have the item needed to, uh, fix it. So that was, that was, that was a cool thing. That was a cool thing. Like Dr. Cross is like, wait, you already have it. <laughs> like, yep. He, he's like, yeah, I've been to medical bay twice. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, luckily you don't have to do an item search, uh, for this one. You have, uh, what you need right away. So you have the solution. Now you just need to go and find the problem. So she unlocks, uh, the hydroponics area so that you can go around and you can find these, uh, corpse with their lungs on the outside of their body. And they're called Weezers. By the way, that has to be one of the most horrific things. To, to actually happen to somebody like I, just the way it looks you know what i'd rather be annihilated by a slasher <laughs> yeah the, these guys look like they're in absolute agony as their lungs on the outside <laughs> have erupted through their through their back yep and they're spewing poison everywhere and your job is to go and stab them with a syringe luckily these things don't fight back yeah yeah uh, but hydroponics, oh my gosh! This- I hated, I hated hydroponics because you get how how do you get ambushed in the same spot four times? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, get, I hated hydroponics, and uh, and and also this is the sound designers really fucking with you because why were there jungle noises every time that necromorphs <laughs> attacked you with hydroponics? <laughs> like you're, you're hearing like, you're hearing like, like lions and, 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 and monkeys and stuff. It's like, what is happening right now? I'm, it's for you know, therapeutic I'm, reasons. Maybe it is, but I'm also thinking it might've been part of the psychosis, you know, of the effect yeah. of being on the Ishimura. No, there's actually like one of the, uh, one of the circuit breakers actually has the, the jungle sounds on it. You can turn the jungle sounds off. I did not know. Okay. That's what I, that's what I get for just trying to get the hell up out of there. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> Even- that, no, when I said for therapeutic reasons, it, that's like, they wanted to more like nature sounding. Well, I remember that. I do remember that. You know, like it was the one place that people could go to to kind of like de-stress. But I did not know. 16 years later, I did not know you could turn those damn things off. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. You can turn it off and reroute the uh, power to one of the other doors. (laughs) This is why this is why Bossers Network needs to have more Let's Plays. (laughs) Yep. So, uh, and yeah, so hydroponics, like there are a ton of enemies. That was a mess. Hydroponics. That was a mess. And also, there are so at this point, you're seeing a whole bunch oh. of like these tendrils that have like a specific weak spot. And yeah. like, oh, I this is also the first time. Mess. This is also the first time in this game that that the uh, that the that the uber necromorphs show up. The ones that the ones that take a lot of hits to kill, no matter what. Yep, this, it, is, the fir- it, this is the first time you encounter one. There's there's essentially game. like three stages of necromorphs. You had the early ones. Then you kind of have more of the darker skinned necromorphs. And then you and they the run nec- fast. They, they run, run fast. fast. <laughs> and then the final ones, which kind of come in late game, are ones that actually have like body armor on it. So that like shooting at the legs are now less effective and you have to go more for the arms. Yeah. Yeah. And they also, and those also run fast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then there's also a, a variant one that is. That's Stasis. Oh, oh, the, oh, the one, oh, the one that vomits on you and and, and, and it makes you walk slow. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, I'm, I'm I'm talking about the uh, the Stasis ones that you eventually see on the. On oh, the oh, we're not, we're not even there yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but thank you for reminding me about the tentacles because actually, actually, because yeah, it's from hydroponics. Yeah, that's right. From hydroponics, once you get out of hydroponics, and once you did, okay. Uh, before I forget, like you, you want to fight in the Leviathan, and the Leviathan is what 
created those Weezer necromorphs, uh, but is also helping to pump like this this deadly like toxin through the um through the uh, through the atmosphere and stuff like that. Cool yeah. fight, by the way, with the fact that you now have like access to the zero Z boosters and all that stuff. You know, cool fight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the original idea was to just shoot the thing out in airlock. But the thing just kind of like grabs on and it's like, nope. So Isaac's like, well, I'm going to have to go. And they're like, that's suicide. I don't have any better plans. This is, you know, I, I tend to do ba- I tend to do better with the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because that, that kind of kind of harkens back to a line he had in, in, um, in Dead Space 2 where he's like, I'm full of bad ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So after you take care, after you take care of the um, after you take care of the Leviathan and stuff like that. Um, uh, is this the part where, OK, I know you I know you, go, I know you have to go to the mining district because. Uh, oh, that's right. She, uh, I believe, Cross mentions that Jacob was working on a distress beacon, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, that the last and, they uh, found it was in the mining area. Yeah, and that's also when Hammond gives you the idea that if you can place a beacon onto onto one of the asteroid chunks that were supposed to be cracked. Well, uh, first, first, actually, the idea was to just launch the beacon, but the yeah. launch tubes were sabotaged. That's all right. Of them. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we go. Uh, yeah. So on the way to mining and stuff like that. Wouldn't you believe it? Uh, wouldn't you believe it? Like those tentacles that you're shooting, one of them attacks you. <laughs> yep. Actually, this is a second attack, I think. Wait, is it a second attack? The first one actually happens, I think, at the after end your of- after your first zero G run. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. in the medical bay. Everything yeah. Happens in the medical bay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is the second time then when you get attacked by a, a tentacle. The drag tentacle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And which, you have to kill them fast. Which you have you have four opportunities to kill to take that tentacle out. <laughs> you have four opportunities or it's an instant death. Yep. Uh so you finally oh, make- the, oh, 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 and the second time is mad at you because it actually like throws you against the bulkhead a couple of times before before it starts doing its thing. Yep. There's also a third time. Yeah. And that one that one was annoying as hell. But we'll get to that one later. Yeah. Uh but yeah, back to mining. Um mining I thought was actually kind of a cool area. It's probably the most different looking out of all the other areas out there. It's more dustier. Um it has four floors all con- uh, connected to an extremely slow elevator. The elevator you- ride from from hell. You you an elevator that's both that huge and that slow, you know, you know, to- yeah. So just just bring just bring all your ammo and stasis packs with you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the whole mission in the mining area is to first find the beacon, then to try and launch it from the tube. But then the tube doesn't work, so then you have to uh, put it onto an asteroid, untether the asteroid, and launch that asteroid out into space. Mm-hmm. Uh. It, it sounds fun and stuff. It, I don't know. It it kind of was actually. It was, it was fun. Of, it was fun because was half cool of half of it was zero G, so you couldn't always hear when you get crept up on. Yep. Um, but the one thing, the one thing that I swear, like as 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 seasoned as I am in Dead Space, the one thing that always burns me up is like placing the beacon on the asteroid and then trying to get back inside the ship <laughs> without being without being mauled by the arm. <laughs> Because <laughs> the arm only rotates inside the ship, so yeah, you kind of have to time yourself on that one, and you can't stasis it. <laughs> nope. So you you get out. Uh, you know, the, obviously the best thing is to wait until you see the arm on the side that you're on, and then uh, when it goes back the other way, that's when you run in. Yeah. Um, but finally, you manage to launch the the asteroid or, or the little planet core piece that they cut off of the planet. And this, space. and at this point, and at this point, Kendra's back, back online and 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 monitoring everything. And she's like, she's like, hey, it's a good job that you know you put the beacon out there, but you forgot the communications is down, so we can't get a message out to the ship. So mm-hmm. another trip back to the to the bridge area. <laughs> but before we do that, we get our old friend the hunter. Yeah, the hunter oh. comes back and the bottom of the the mining shaft, and again, it's like you're being 
pursued by that and several other necromorphs and you have to try and disable the damn thing before you jump on the elevator otherwise if it comes on the elevator with you you're you in did. one hell of a freaking long elevator ride with yeah, the he... thing chasing you yeah yeah i hate that hunter so much you know what i didn't have Okay, so the first, my first encounter with the hunter and the final encounter with the hunter for me were the scariest ones. Like this encounter, I, I felt like wasn't that bad, you know, because this is more of like if you evade it real fast, like you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. No, again, like if the idea was to disable it before you get yeah. out of the elevator, then quickly. Yeah, it's get more that like, yeah, you just, you just able to get on the elevator is like it lost track of you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, he followed me all the way down here. So how's it lose track of me on the elevator? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, now we uh we are back at the bridge so that we can re uh realign the communicator. Yeah, and the bridge has its own elevator, but thank God it's not an open elevator like <laughs> like like mining was. Uh, but yeah, you have to traverse three floors on it. And you know, I like what I liked about this is like you learn you learn about well, it was gravity plating in the original game, but in this game is it's uh it's just electrified deck plating and stuff like that because because the plating is, is has has messed up, and this is where the gravity plating was and stuff like that. So uh so. So you no longer have to worry about being persplatted like to the ceiling, you know, but you have to worry about being electrocuted to death. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is for, you know, I kind of like being splattered. To the <laughs> <laughs> no, I hated it because sometimes, <laughs> because sometimes like I, in the original game, like sometimes I lost my sense of awareness and yep. when a necromorph attacking me, I would back up <laughs> into, into a gravity and blade. <laughs> right into the, right into the scene. Yeah. What is cool, though, is that the electric does affect the necromorphs as well. So a lot of them tended to get shocked on those plates. Yeah. Oh, by the way, though, by the way, though, and this is for this is for this. This is another this is another pro tip. When you're in those rooms, look up because there's dead bodies on the ceiling. And guess what? There are infectors in that area, too. So you need to be really creative about how you use your your, your weapons and your ammo. Mm hmm. All right, so we uh, we get to the communications array. Of course, the array's busted. You know, it's not enough to get the power back to it. It's It's got a lot of fried panels. And so now you get your little pipe dream, uh, pipe dream puzzle where you have to replace broken panels with good panels but have to connect them in such a way that leads the relay from the bottom of the screen to the top. By the way, that was a, that was such a easy that's such that was the easiest puzzle I've ever I've ever encountered in any game. You know, like I I I, sw I swear, like if you played any Super Mario game, you can you can pass this you can pass this puzzle. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really not that hard. There's not a whole lot of good pieces left, so you know that you don't have to build this thing to wrap around the whole room. You just basically got to snake it up to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, and so Kendra, so Kendra's like, okay. Uh, okay. Like powers back to communications, but, but now like something has managed to, to, to lodge against the asteroids. The asteroid hasn't gotten far enough to transmit the signal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, so Kendra's trying to figure out what's going on. And then she has like this is the most horrified reaction. She's like, Oh my God. She's like, she's like, there's this thing out there and it's holding on to the asteroid. <laughs> yeah. And so you open up the windows and you see what exactly that thing is. And the Leviathan. The good old <laughs> Leviathan, still not dead and decided it is holding on to dear life out there. <laughs> yeah. So another spacewalk and another trip with the, and, and, another, and, and, and the coolest thing they did, the second coolest thing they did with the ADS cannons and uh, like they use the ADS cannons. Well, actually the ADS cannons in the original game was also how you defeated the Leviathan. Yeah. But I think this way, this one was, this is the one that should have been way back in 08, you know, in my yeah. opinion. This was a cool fight because you had three cannons kind of in a, like a half circle area and you had to activate them and destroy hit the little glowy spots on, well, the big glowy spots on the body. And, um, and the then, Leviathan fought back. The Leviathan would grab shit and throw back at you. Well, throw back at the cannons to, to defeat the, to, to, to smash the turrets. Yep. And it would shoot out tentacles to like sweep the area so yeah you had to make I didn't sure like you that, but i didn't blood. like that by the way <laughs> yeah and then it started spitting out mines um 
to kind of get in your way as you travel. And of course, you're out in space, so you can use them against it. Well, yeah. Um, you, you, I was referring to the fact that you had oh yeah issues oh yeah yeah it. yeah it was zero G of course yeah I I actually died on this battle because I totally forgot about my oxygen oh all you suffocated sudden, out there yeah I, I it's all of a sudden I heard beeping I was like at ten percent or ten like percent it's yeah like, fuck and then I was trying to get to the thing I got to the I actually, pill- I actually didn't die. I actually didn't die on that one. I died on the first Leviathan battle in my in my first playthrough, but I didn't die on that one. I was like, oh no, there's no way. There's no way. Like this <laughs> I think I think at that point, like well, because I, I I loved how well they redid that that ADS cannon battle. I I loved it so much. So I was like, oh, I there's no way I'm dying on this. I'm I'm seeing this 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 thing through. Yep. Nope. I was stupid. I forgot about the oxygen. <laughs> Second time I went through, I'm like, okay. Destroy one side or one weak point. Grab some oxygen. Go grab, for the nether. Grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But but this fight was this fight was kind of hairy because like you know like one like you know like like once it uh, once it got to the point where like you know like oh it destroyed the cannons the turrets and stuff like that you know like you you literally had to like fight it you fight it against itself and stuff like that. So I thought it was I thought it was cool, but yeah, it was definitely a harrowing fight and stuff like that. And um. And so after you after you after you destroy that, of course, like you know, like uh, like uh, like they have. What was it? Uh, Kendra need, Kendra needs you to come back into the actual main comms room. Um, yeah, if to, I'm not mistaken, yeah. To activate the actual comms array. To act to act to activate it and stuff like that. And um, it, yo, was was it was it me or was that room creepy? And I don't know. It was kind of standard. I thought like it's just a small room with. Like, oh, I mean, I mean. Okay, okay, let me let me let me let me rephrase it. That room was okay until until the regenerator came back. The the the, 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 the hunter came back. It was oh, that yeah. room, right? Yeah. Uh, later though. Uh, later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it was after what happens. That's right because that's right cuz at that point Mercer has been like tracking what you're doing. That's yeah. right. You're right. Uh yeah, yeah so yeah, so we we get we get the we get the beacon activated. We get everything established. And then, um, and then we get a communication from a ship called the USG Valor, saying mm-hmm. that it saying that it picked up your beacon and it also picked up an escape pod from the Eastern Moon. I was like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're not open that escape pod. You're not open. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, Kendra, Kendra, Kendra frantically gets on the communication, and telling them not to open it. And then, of course, we see like a a, a, some, a, a transmission and uh, Chen stabbing people to death. <laughs> yep, it's like it's a necromorph in the background, and you know people screaming and all fire broke loose. And uh, then we see the actual um, ship out in the distance, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's coming your way. And okay, it- now you now you know what this is where this is where at certain points, like I feel like I I can't suspend my disbelief because like the USG Valor is a um is a military vessel. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me you're telling me one necromorph was able to do all of that? It, it's even it gets even worse when you realize what the usg valor was actually there for yeah and right then you're yeah. like like because that you find all the briefings and stuff like we'll get to this in like the next like five minutes but yeah first uh you know because the necromorph destroyed killed everyone on the ship the ship comes into the collision course with the ishimura and specifically right towards you you know mm-hmm. like and so uh Oh, yeah, the Val- have- yeah, the Valor, the Valor does lose, does lose, uh, does lose, uh, uh it loses bearings and it crashes into Ishimura, yep. which, yo, like, hats off to the designer of the Ishimura because, like, this thing's been pelted by asteroids. It has a, it has a chunk of, it has a chunk of a plant attached to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's got an outbreak of an alien, of an alien, and a ship just rammed into it, and this thing is still ticking. It's only ticking because Isaac put in all that effort to repair it and. <laughs> Keep that damn thing alive. Because I feel like with all the shit that happened to the ship up to that point, a, another starship running into it should just snap that thing in half. <laughs> nah, that thing's made out of good old American steel. <laughs> so, um, the Valor. Yep, the Valor is now crashed and lodged into the ship. Um, which okay, fine. We find out that they that uh, Hammond did find a escape shuttle in the crew quarters, but the shuttle is missing a very crucial part. Uh, that powers the shock point drive. 
Yep. But the Valor should have that same part. So now your job is to go into the Valor. Oh, oh, did we did we also mention that this part is highly radioactive? <laughs> well, they they find something else in the uh, is it highly radioactive? Oh, it's it's surrounded by it's surrounded by radioactive material. That's right. You have to deal okay. with you have to deal with the radioactive material first. I'm I'm sorry. Like I'm getting yeah. I'm getting my I'm getting my I'm getting my stuff jumbled. I'm sorry. Yeah. We find out there's also something else in the valor too. Once we get into the valor, um, when we get into it, Hammond's like, uh, "There's a there's a nuclear warhead on this ship." That's and, it. Yeah, uh, it's surrounded by very faulty equipment, and anything could literally set this thing off. We kind of need to stop this from uh, blowing up everything. Hmm. But Hammond decides he's going to brave brave the great outdoors and you know join you on this mission. That's true. Yeah. Uh, now here's now here's something. Um, okay. So yeah. Um, I blew myself to Smith the Rings four times on my first playthrough. <laughs> Only one for me, and that's but and it, what it's is because it's because I panicked every time a necromorph jumped out. <laughs> uh, and all it takes is one straight shot. One straight shot, and you you dead. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 everything blows up, and yeah, game over. Like. <laughs> it, it yeah it's kind of funny how inside the missile room is a whole bunch of exploder necromorphs like yeah they, they, that obviously was like a ploy because that's what happens i shot uh i shot one of the exploders and it exploded and it blew up everything so in that room you kind of want to start you use your kinesis to kind of shoot things at them and yeah try not to hit the explodey arm hit the sack Yep. Uh but you do yeah, manage some bullshit. That's yeah, some bullshit. You, you do manage to disable the warhead and uh then it you know is safely removed and I think jettisoned. I don't remember that part. I don't not. remember that part either. Um but new new necromorph alert while while we're at it. Um yep. the stasis. So- yeah, so uh, so the USG Valor was a military vessel, so like these, so like so like these guys were in like combat gear and stuff like that, and part of their and part of their combat gear was the stasis modules. Well, uh, well, when they were transformed and stuff, their bodies merged with the stasis modules, and it and it affected how they move. And you would think stasis, yeah, slow. No, they speed up. And so I, I nicknamed them Twitchers because like because like they were literally like 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 do this thing where like they're they're like in one spot and next thing you know they're in another spot and stuff like that and they run after you fast and stuff like that so it's like they so it's like they they Shazam yeah, it's and like they come they, at you they're suffering from like massive leg almost and so yeah. they just like magically teleport into various spots until they're on you. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing um, though is, oh, if you ahead. shoot them once, if you shoot them once though, it disrupts their it disrupts their stasis module, and then that's what actually slows them down and actually makes them more vulnerable. And not only them vulnerable, if they get shot well near anything else after you, they too get stuck in the stasis field. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, this is also where you can find one of the mini games that this game has to offer the uh, the shooting gallery. I'm so glad. Okay, so the shooting gallery was a pain in my ass in the original game, but I I like the I like the the. <laughs> it was almost like you could cheat in this one, <laughs> where you could not cheat in the original one because, like, I think I think I think at a certain point the game's like, oh fuck it, just give it all to him. <laughs> yeah, well, what happens is all of a sudden the necromorphs start invading while yeah. you're in the shooting gallery, and then yeah. you know, it's like, okay, you win. Like they just. <laughs> disabled yeah. the gallery it's like it's like here's here's the prize <laughs> mm-hmm. yep uh so finally we get to the part that we uh we need in the ship uh hammond's there too and also our good old friend chen yeah it's, yeah because chen is was in the escape pod <laughs> yep also i i got a question it was chen that was in the escape pod how the hell yeah. did they all turn into necromorph so fast? See, that's my that that's my thing too. Like, I'm like, and that's the other thing too. I'm like, I'm like, this is a military vessel. I can understand, like, you know, like certain things don't make sense because not only do not only do they need like not only do they need like you know like to start killing people, they need an infector. 
Yeah. Like, hadn't, so was Shin and, like, and the infector uh, in, in, in a pod? Yeah, what, it was, was, I feel like the ship or was did, or, or did it or, – or wait, did an infector get on the ship after it crashed into the Ishimura? And because, like, remember, Isaac, had, Isaac got in through the blown hatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's like still, like, they were already that – like – Dozens of necromorphs at that part. I know, that. right? Like it's like it's it's way too it's way too fast. And, even though, yeah, like I mean, like an infector doesn't doesn't need that much time to like to like create a necromorph. But you know, I'm like, man, like you tell me. And actually, wait, now I now I remember. Yeah, you do encounter an infector on the Valor. So yeah, there was one there. Yeah, but only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, I I feel like it's it's almost like it's almost like as like we got more alien movies, like the gestation mm-hmm. period of uh chest bursters. Like it just <laughs> yeah, it just got, it just got, clearly happened in like, it's like the, forty five like minutes. The, it's like the face hugger fell off, and whoa, we have a chest hugger already, <laughs> a and, chest burster already. <laughs> and wow, and like then less than an hour later, we got a full grown alien. I know where I know. Whereas like in the original movie, that that dude was that dude was in a coma for like for like for like twenty four hours. <laughs> yep. It's like, you know what's funny is I, I watched something on YouTube called Pitch Meeting. It's like, wait a minute, didn't they take longer in the other movies? I need this movie to happen. Okay, let's uh speed up the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so there there there's a there's a I think that's my one make it make sense moment in the in dead space. That well, <laughs> here's another part of that make it make sense. We find out that the valley was searching for the Ishimura to begin with because they yeah. understood that the Ishimura stumbled upon the marker and they had the directives of two different operations. One, if you know, there wasn't any necromorphs to contain the ship or B, you know, if there were necromorphs to nuke it. Mm-hmm. So when, if they had with like the idea that there was going to be danger why would they be caught unaware by a escape pod? They would already have the guns aimed at whoever was in the escape pod. Yeah. They knew what the infection would do. Yeah. Oh, you know, I actually, you know, me being, me being a person that served in the military, I feel like certain parts of the chain of command knew and other parts did not. So like the people who actually grabbed the escape pod did not know what they were dealing with. <laughs> still think the chain of command would have caught on like that the valley sure. not that huge of a ship yeah I, yeah like, i know yeah I, I yeah i know make it make sense i know <laughs> <laughs> well why did it happen because it needed to for plot <laughs> yeah plot armor maybe yeah 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 so uh so yeah so uh so so chen catches up with uh with, with hammond and mm-hmm. and hammond's like hammond's like look like uh like like you get you get the you get the shell the shuttle pod repaired and stuff and get out of here. Um, and he tries and and he tries to deal with Chen. Uh, Chen kills him and then runs him into the shot core, which the shot, the shot way, core. Chen, Chen stabs him. Hammond oh, right. finally has some moment of clarity and runs into the and core. runs him into the shock point core. That's right. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. because uh, I'm thinking in the original game. In the original game, it was a brute that attacked Hammond and like tore him apart. <laughs> yeah, but now we have characters. So uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. So the shock point drive just got annihilated thanks to Hammond, like you know, like taking out Chin. Um, and Isaac's got to get off. Isaac's got to get off. Well, the, no, ship. The, 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 shock, the shock drive was actually still fine. What was it? What was it that was causing the um the ship to explode? Though it was like get off this ship before it explodes. I think it was after that you take the shock drive off, and now this sh- system lost. Oh, that's right. It destabilizes. System. That's right. Yeah, yeah it, it loses all the critical systems once you remove yeah. that power source. Now, now you know. Now you know what I thought. Some bullshit. Mm-hmm. As you're trying to get off the Valor and get back onto the Ishimura, like, like because be, because the uh, infect the the infected uh, soldiers on on the Ishim- on the uh, Valor, you know, are the way they are. You can see them like twitching and getting away from you onto the Ishimura. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like this is some bullshit. Well, it's cool, got- but it's some bullshit because in the original game, you're like, how the hell did they get on the Ishimura? <laughs> Now you know. <laughs> I mean, if the infector somehow got onto the Valor, I guess the they can get onto the Ishimura. <laughs> yep. So I mean, there's of- a gaping hole in the Ishimura, you know, at this point. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the Valor blows up. Uh, Ishimura's still fine, though. It's cool. Um, you had the part that you needed. You can finally go 
get to the shuttle and you know get the hell out of there yeah uh, and on, on your way to crew quarters this is when dr kine finally communicates with you well he he kind of does it just before the valley does and you tell him to kindly fuck off <laughs> that's that's right that's right because you're like oh i know you're a unitologist you can you can go right right the fuck off <laughs> It's like you you don't understand. We need to do no no. I'm done. I'm getting out of the. I'm getting out of here. If you can't tell me when Nicole's at, like I don't care. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so you make it to the crew quarters, and um, the, the this is another quarters. area. Of the ship. This is another area of the ship I hated. By the way, the crew quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh again. There it was, was there was so much going on in the crew quarters. <laughs> I mean, this is the part where the game's like, okay, maybe we dragged our feet a little too long and we need to start wrapping uh, things up. Yeah. So a lot of plot points get uh, resolved here in the crew quarters, but it makes it an extra long kind of chapter. And also, it's like the whole idea of the crew quarters is the shuttle bay is like closed off by uh, the tendrils again. And so you had to mm-hmm. destroy all the tendrils from like that the weak point is always like on some far off like corridor in the crew quarters that you have to um yeah you you get a lot you get a lot of uh backstory about what went on the eastern mirror because like i (laughs) it is me or all the senior officers who were left after the captain died they all just hole up in the crew quarters and whatnot (laughs) because you you got during the unauthorized uh authority mission on un- our unauthorized access or whatever it was uh hold on let me pull up my doc here quick uh you're not authorized you're not authorized you're not authorized yeah like we saw v- like the various like this person committed suicide this person you know yeah like that yeah but yeah but it, it feel like it felt like the most important parts of chain of command they all were up there in the crew quarters for whatever reason and here's a call out because like um okay so what a lot of people may or may not know about the Dead Space franchise is they were trying to make it an extended universe. Uh, so, like back in back in the day, like you had like no- novelizations of uh, of different stories and chapters in in, in the Dead Space universe. Uh, you actually had two animated movies for it. Uh, you also had like uh, like digital comics and, and actual comic books and graphic novels and stuff like that. Uh, there was. Um, yeah, the uh, dead. There was um, it was one of the it, the first Dead Space m- animated movie to come out, which um, I'm trying to look up the I'm trying to look up now, so like no, so like no one murders me when I if I accidentally get it wrong. Um, uh, but in the first movie, uh, you um, you follow a character uh called Alyssa Vincent. She's a chief. She's the chief security officer for the Ishimura. And um, and it's up there that you hear a, that you that you actually hear Dead Space Downfall. It's up there to hear a, a, a log where they were trying to find Vincent. They mm-hmm. were trying to find her to find out what's going on. So I thought that was really cool. And this is all part of like motive, like doing doing the thing of like incorporating like the established canon that would happen after the original game into like this game to make it more cohesive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. It, again, it just shows just all the heart that motive put into this game yeah mm-hmm. uh so in this uh while you're clearing off the the tendrils you're always you're being constantly chased by the hunter at this point um because dr mercer wants you wants to stop you in fact uh we find dr mercer and um jacob temple in the crew quarters um and of course dr Poor mercer temple yeah he uh temple got like he he got wronged like really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I I can't remember. Oh, you were, we were getting we we're getting crew keys. That's right, we we're getting keys that would help pilot the shuttle and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and Mercer ambushes Temple right right as you're like coming into the same room that they are in and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And Mercer Mercer hits him with, hits Temple with stasis, and then and then. And then uses, I think it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like it looked like one of the rivet guns from from Dead Space Two. Yeah, it, it he, was just one. It was just a single shot to the head. To the head, and then you see Temple's head, like it, it like broke apart, like 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 puzzle fragments, and it was like it was the wildest thing. And then and then his body dies in stasis, like it falls to the ground, still in stasis, and it was like that yeah. is the, that is the most 
fucked up thing I'd ever seen. And when and, uh, versus a Mercer goes, it's like, you know, Mercer death says, like, this is a very painful way to die. Because you feel, because you feel every minute of it. Mm -hmm. Every moment of it, I should say. Yep. Uh, so we eventually, uh, we eventually clear out the corridor. Uh, kind, um, before we can fully clear it out, though, kind finally re re meet him in person. And we can tell that he's already not all right. Like he's mm -hmm. talking to an animate. He's talking to like Amelia, his, his wife, Amelia, his wife. <laughs> Um, also, while we're wandering through the crew quarters, we kind of hear Dr. Mercer's um, evaluation of Isaac and calls him suffering from grand delusions. Mm -hmm. um, and later we find out just how true that is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we uh, clear out the corridor. We help kind move his marker because it's, it's sitting in the crew quarters. Yeah, and it's every time you walk near the marker, like weird things happen. Like you, it's almost like I, I love light that. Happened. I love that. Like it, it, it's and it also screwed your your controller inputs. Like it, you know, it, like it, yeah, like it was. It, and 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 I think I think that was like I think that was like the chef's kiss. His whole thing. They wanted you. They want to convey to you that this marker fucks with your brain. I. I love them for that because in the original game, in the original game, I think the only thing that happens when you got close to marker is like, you just hear this hum, but that's about it. But in this game it's like, no, like we're going to screw you with you being, it, it was almost like psycho madness again. And, 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 in, um, in, in, in Metal Gear Solid one, it was almost like that, you know? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't notice the inputs, but I, I noticed the dizziness. It, I noticed that the bad guys started glowing red. <laughs> They start glowing red. Some of them, some of them. Okay, so here's another thing about the Dead Space uh, Downfall movie. Like necromorphs could get to a certain proximity of it, and it and it was and it's called the Dead Space. Like they couldn't get they couldn't get close to it, you know. Um, but that's also because like a convergence, uh, like they needed more necromorphs than just necromorphs than what was what was in that one room at the time to start mm -hmm. what's called a convergence event and stuff like that. See, like I said, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> this is this is me knowing the lore, uh, yeah. Which they actually talk about convergence in in this game because that's something you don't learn about until the second game. Yep, and you don't see what the result is until the third game. Yeah, convergences, and I feel like you know in this game you kind of the Leviathan is almost the effects of what the convergence was supposed to be. Like I I feel like that was the start. In the Lord, they call it the Brethren Moon. Yeah, and I feel actually, like that's what actually, it was. Actually, what I think the Leviathan is is because you know, like you know, like how like um, um. Well, okay, this is more Dead Space lore. Basically, with the with the the marker, the marker messes with stuff on a, on almost a, on almost a subatomic level and stuff like that. So, like for example, like all that sludge and stuff that you wind up having to trudge through and stuff like that. That's actually human. That's actually human yeah. remains. And when I say human remains, I don't mean like dead bodies and stuff like that. I mean like you know like our dead skin cells, like our hair. Yeah, it, it's um, a biomass created. From yeah, it's a biomass, and I think that's what the Leviathan is. Like it's it's a convergence yeah. of all that biomass until it becomes sentient on its own and stuff like that. You know, um, because like remember when you're when you're like when you have to like move through the move through the corridor of this biomass and you wind up and you and you wind up finding a, a body stuck in it and that's how you get your flamethrower for the first time and then right and then right after you do that right after you get around it you see another body that's like basically consumed but now it's like sentient you know and it's and, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's on the it's on the way of becoming one of those uh one of those uh the, the things that basically like guard doors <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still, I still like to believe that's still like the create starting of a brother moon because that's kind of what the convergence is. It's getting all the bodies, you know, that were killed by the necromorphs and turning it into a moon. Yeah. Oh, and also, this, also, it's during is during that encounter is during that encounter with Mercer when he kills Temple that Mercer talks about the hive mind. Uh, kind shows the hive mind. In, uh, oh, kind. It was kind. Yeah. That's right. He shows the video. That, that's that. You're yeah. you're right. Kind shows right. the video of the hive mind. Um, yeah, because he's like this, uh, and, and actually, like him. That was that was the point where he knew something was wrong because when after kind sees that video that that surfaces from Aegis Seven, mm -hmm. then he's like, oh no, like we we got something wrong here with this unitology's business. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, they they Isaac also understands then that they cannot let any they cannot let any sign of like Aegis Seven or any they need to get the marker back there. That way, it might uh, pacify the hive mind, Mit- and, mitigate like all the stuff that they did. <laughs> yeah, so that that's why they're trying to get the marker onto the shuttle, and you oh. finally get to the shuttle, oh, and, and you have oh, to. You have to get good, it good. activated. Um, and this is, again, another hunter boss fight. Is uh, To do that, like you have to run a test engine um, uh, to get it to activate. But um, Mercer, of course, is pissed off and uh, sends the hunter after you. And Mercer's about to get what's coming to him, by the way. Yep. Uh, so the idea is you have to disable the hunter right in front of the engine. So that you can turn it on and this time absolutely decimate every cell that the hunter has. By the way, that's a call out the dead space. That's call the dead space three. Because in dead space three, that's how you that's how you take out take out one of the regenerators. Like <laughs> testing an engine. <laughs> so remind me, in the original one, was the hunter still hunting you during those? Times or yeah, the hunter, like you, you have one more encounter with the hunter, and I forget how you take him out in the in the original, but I thought it was the engine, but I don't remember. It might have been the it might have been the engine. I can't remember. It's been so long since I played the original Dead Space. Like, I mean, you know, like I feel like it should be committed to my memory. Um I do remember I do remember like you 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 fight him one more time after being in the crew quarters, and that's the last time, you know. Yeah. Um yeah, it could. Yeah, I think it maybe it was an engine, but I just cannot remember for sure. Yeah, well, it's decimated now. Mercer is absolutely in, like mad because he killed his most precious experiment, and um, the then a tentacle comes up and grabs. Which, which I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, <laughs> was, is there a new Leviathan? <laughs> it can't be the same Leviathan. What? I'm like, well, I was like, what the fuck? But at the same time, I was also like, yay, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Because in the original game, in the original game, like he sacrificed himself to a, to an infector, which I thought was kind of bullshit. Yeah, I mean, he, I I feel like the tentacle being killing him off was still like easier. He got off easier than he should have. He, uh, he's a smear. He's a smear on the wall somewhere. The Ishimura. <laughs> yeah, but you don't get to see the smear. You just get to see him be pulled down. Can you can you imagine running through the ship and then all of a sudden you see this big trail like coming from the ceiling down past the floor? It's like, ooh, that's Mercer. <laughs> that would have been fine. I mean, we we get a worse death with Hammond and eventually Kendra too. But you know, oh, yeah, like, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Mercer's the one that deserved it. That's true. That oh, trust me, I'm never going to argue about that. I'm never yeah. going to argue about that because I feel like I feel like Mercer was doing way too much on the Ishimura. I've, yeah, the that I mean, a lot of the issues was because of Mercer and his, you know, honestly, if, 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 if I feel like I feel like I feel like if the if for some for some strange reason Matthias like would have like you know snapped out of his mental break and stuff like that. He would have gotten the, he would have gotten shit back on track, you know. Well, tried to at least, you know. Like I, 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 I was like so much into you know, like I thought yeah, he, he was, was de- he was devout, he was devout. Yeah. So I don't know if that would have been possible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So moving on, uh, uh, just for the sake of time here, um, we get pulled down by another tentacle, uh, kind of also into the hangar area. Um, and uh, we find we destroy that, and now we have to go and grab the marker from the cargo bay and bring it into the hangar bay, so that the shuttle can go and pick it up. It's that requires a bunch of like puzzles, and finally you get the marker into the shuttle, where then all of a sudden Doctor Kind's waiting outside for you, and he gets shot right through the chest by Kendra, who reveals that her plan is to keep the marker uh, from falling into anyone else's hands. Th- that bitch. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was our plot twist right there. Like, you know, like she was doing all this stuff, the red herring us to thinking that Hammond was that Hammond was the uh, the bad guy. But then after we see Hammond, like basically like sacrifice himself to like save everybody else. We're like, OK, this doesn't make any sense. So what's what's Kendra's problem? And here's the thing. But here's the things about it. Right. As we're playing the game, like Kendra starts saying things like, oh, she's she started noticing like her dead she's, brother. Yeah, her dead brother. Yeah. And so like that. So she's being she's being affected by the same dimension field that's being put off by the marker as everybody else. Like eventually the marker gets its hooks into you. Uh there's only a few people, there's only a few people out there that are truly resistant to the marker. And um uh, and that's and and according to the lore, that's why the that's why the uh that's why the marker creates necromorphs because it's like if if you if you if you if you can't get you to like to like do what we want you to do, we're just gonna take you out, you know, stuff like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh but Kendra but Kendra is I wanna say she's about probably on the same level as, as Isaac is because she can withstand it, but it, it is taking its toll on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um you know, you, you you're stuck on the issue more again without a shuttle, but you get a call from Nicole, you know, who is alive. Yay. And yeah. she's like, Hey, you know, we can bring, we can still fix this. We can still make everything whole. That, yeah. <laughs> that right there. I've been like, okay, you've been on this ship too long lady. <laughs> yep. And uh, so she uh, brings you up to a plan to re uh, you can actually recall the show. Actually yeah yeah so yeah so you want yeah you wind up you wind up in the in the hangar control um you hit a tractor beam with the shuttle and kendra immediately notes out and <laughs> it's an escape pod yep <laughs> it's like and hopefully we see the last of her <laughs> yeah so there's so you so you track your shuttle back onto the onto the ship you and nicole get onto the onto the ship head down to aegis 7 wonderful idea by the way just wonderful you got that, again the idea was, was to Put the marker back to keep the hive mind pacified. That uh, I would just I would have just taken my chances, like like slung shot the 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 shuttle with the marker onto the planet and and hope that would have been enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we understand now that you know that that um there was the the dissolute it was the uh, disillusions that were creating the. You have to bring the marker back because it wasn't actually going to pacify the hive mind. It was going to amplify, yeah. again, the effects. Like, it was going to make the whole thing whole. Um, and yep. we find that out. Um, uh, what does, we find that out, actually, while we're on Age of Seven, what's act, what actually happened. Um, yeah, actually, sure. actually, actually, on the shuttle ride, on the shuttle ride down to Age of Seven, when you're having a conversation with Nicole, like she's starting to like let slip like how this stuff happens and stuff like that. Yeah, Nicole, so, Nicole's explaining what's going on. Yeah, a bit, um, while you're on the mission, and you know, do then you both are kind of working and pushing the marker over to the. Um, the dig site mm -hmm. and eventually while you're doing this kendra reaches out or no you you finally get the marker to the pedestal and then kendra comes out holding nicole and she's like you know you're completely disillusional watch your message and watch it and to watch the, the entire time yeah and then, and then you see, and then you see, like on the uh, the actual video, like watching it all the way through to completion. Nicole actually committed suicide on the Ishimura. Yep, because uh, she did. There was no other way, you know. She, but wait, who were we talking to the entire time we got down here to Aegis Seven, <laughs> and come to find out that you know, like Isaac's trauma has caused him to project onto Doctor Cross. That is that's Nicole, but also in another twist is that Doctor Cross has been thinking he's with Jacob Temple the whole time. So mm -hmm. they've both been seeing what they want to see, and that is actually and that I thought that was genius. And you know what? It also kind of helped uh, explain why while you're on the Ishimura, Nicole could physically do things. Yeah, well, she shows up and she's like, and she's like, and she's like helping you out while you're trying to traverse from one part of the Ishimura to another. And you're also having the protector and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, so, you know, now, now in the original, motive, that motive was actually, explained. Yeah, Motive actually answered that question for us, which is why I, I, I give them, I, I, like I said, I tip my hat off to them, you know, like they, they made a lot of things that 
in the original game did not make sense and also were never hit upon in Dead Space 2 and 3 made sense because Dead Space Extraction that was originally on the Wii was a was a prequel. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Uh so Kendra kills Cross and then takes the marker back or is tried to retransport it right back to the ship. You take a shortcut um and you kind of cut Kendra off right at the ship. And uh before she can get the marker, the hive mind stirs, slaps her off the ship platform, and then smacks her then just like slams right on top of her, basically turning her into jelly. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. But uh okay, so the yeah. But I'll talk about it after we get we get through this because this is the final fight now. Like you're fighting the actual end game boss here, uh, in the hive mind. Like it was a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good fight actually, in my opinion. Like as far as like final battles go, this is pretty, this is pretty good. Like you know, especially considering like in modern games, like most final fights are like really anticlimactic. Yeah, th- this thing's really huge. Uh, luckily, like it, it's hard, but you can see you can discern the pattern of how it moves. Yeah. It will always do the same thing, you know, the same pattern over and over again. So it's something yeah. that you learn pretty fast. And uh, also at this point, and also at this point in Dead Space, um at this point in Dead Space, like uh like basically you kind of know where weak spots are, even on creatures that you've never encountered before. Oh, it's always the glowy pussy orb. Yeah. Uh yep. but these ones move around a lot. So Yeah. The first part of this battle is kind of a pain in the butt, but then once you defeat the first five orbs around its mouth, then it opens up its chest cavities where it reveals five more orbs that would probably is, is its hearts, is mm-hmm. what it is. And once you kill those, then the thing uh, dies. It, it spews up a whole bunch of like, blah, yeah. slime and stuff. And then you get onto the ship and you fly away. Oh, now what I liked about what I liked about the end of that fight though is like is like um is like while it's doing its death throws thing, you know, you look up in the sky and you see the yep. asteroid coming down. <laughs> mm-hmm. The untethered uh the untethered core broken piece of the planet. Yep, because you had to let that thing go because the Ishimura was gonna gonna come down anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, you're the hive mind's dead. You're you got your shuttle. You're flying away. Sigh of relief. You know Isaac takes off his helmet, just kind of breathes, and then you hear Elizabeth speak again. And he turns around, and he sees this like zombified Elizabeth like jump up and like you know. Wait, was it? No, it was Nicole. It was Nicole. Yeah, thank you. It was Nicole. Zombified oh, yeah, Nicole. yeah. This at this point, all the misdirection has has yeah. hit us. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the markers got me now. <laughs> but yeah, roll we credits. see a zombified Nicole and like ah, doing that one last jump scare, and then roll credits. And that was Dead Space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I. I strongly stand behind my A plus rating for this game. Like it, and and because and because like I'm playing New Game Plus right now, like I feel like it keeps getting better. Because when you play New Game Plus, uh, if you collect if you collect a marker statue in, uh, in, in every chapter, you actually see the bonus ending. Which the bonus ending is definitely designed to set up the events for Dead Space Two. Yeah, I still need to pull the YouTube for that. Um, just because I don't see myself doing a second run through. I mean, if I do, I'd probably try and do a easy game with trying the plasma cutter on a new game plus. That's that's, that's what I'm doing. My new game plus. I'm doing normal normal setting with, with just using the plasma cutter because my favorite weapon, my favorite weapon, the contact beam. Oh my god, that weapon got an overhaul. The contact beam in, in the in, in Dead Space One and Two, like you basically had to charge it, but when you let it rip, it destroyed everything. Whereas now, like the the primary fire mode is uh, basically like think the um, think the proton the the proton packs in uh, yeah, Ghostbusters, it, it's just giant laser cool, beam. coolest shit. <laughs> I'm like I'm like how you make my favorite weapon even cooler? <laughs> no, I, my favorite weapon was the Ripper, like the just Ripper, the saw blade. Like I that I always seem to run into saw blade ammo, so it's like 
that's the one I primarily used. It usually killed whatever I was kill- aiming for and like stalled them enough so that they couldn't hit me. Yeah. Um, the line it, racks, the line racks is a cool weapon in theory, but it, but its limitations hit really quickly, you know? Yeah. That one was kind of slow. For yeah. Me, so, but yeah. So, uh, that's dead space. We did it. We finished, uh, we finished. So, uh, any final thoughts about this? Um, my, my final thoughts overall is like I like I I love the game. Like I feel like I feel like I feel like you know like EA is trying to say like it didn't sell enough copies, you know, uh to justify like coming back into it, you know. I think it's kind of bullshit because like I feel like the landscape of gaming has changed now. Like you're like I w- I don't want to say Dead Space is niche, but it feels like it's niche enough that you know like it's not going to topple Resident Evil. It's not. Yeah. It, it it topples it topples Silent Hill because I feel like I feel like as far as like survival horror games go, like Sur- Silent Hill is 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 as culty as they get as far as cult cult classics and favorites and stuff like that. Um, it, it's definitely like it it Silent Hill is its own monster. It's its own, like, it's its own thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, in terms of like good space horror, this definitely fulfills that. Uh, and we need and yeah. we need more sci-fi horror games. We we do like in, and when I say sci-fi horror, I mean like I mean like the 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 true the true and tested sci-fi horror games. Not not Resident Evils, you know. Like Resident Evil is sci-fi horror, but it's it's more. I feel like it's sci-fi horror that deals in, with more paranormal stuff in, in this day and age now than than, ever, than it, it, it's straight from its premise. Yeah, it's not. It, it's more like sci-fi in terms. Of, the most sci-fi it gets is bioweapons. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it, Resident Evil straight from its premise, and that's and that's not and I'm not saying that as a bad thing, you know. I I like that Resident Evil has been able to like r- has been able to like r- uh, revive itself, and you know like you know still pick up you know like it it still keeps the core stuff that makes it Resident Evil, and I'm talking about the story, you know, while mm-hmm. also trying to do some new stuff because I mean like if you told me I'd be fighting werewolves and and witches and and a vampire lady. You know, but back when I played the original Resident Evil in 1996, I'd been like, "You're you're crazy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or weird, or weird mouth tentacle worms. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see what the next one has. Don't forget yeah. mold monsters. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like w- uh, some some of the things I also like, I also loved about this is the fact that you know, like they 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 added side quests to the games to number to it was it was designed to make you backtrack, but you mm-hmm. got rewarded for doing all this backtracking because because you because you saw that Nicole was actually doing what she could to try to figure out why things were going the way they were and what these necromorphs were. You also got to learn that um that Nicole uh like Isaac and Nicole were dating because Nicole was originally his his mom's counselor you know to try and get her unbrainwashed from unitology. We uh, anyone uh, like that that didn't go well, which is why which is why Cole and um, Isaac had a falling out and, you know, things wound up the way they were by the time she got to Ishimura. Um, we also learned, we also learned a lot of stuff about what was going on behind the scenes with the unitologist, you know, um, in these side quests as well and stuff like that. So, you know, like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, man, like motive motive has like the Bible right now. And like, and it, it's, it's a shame that they may not get a chance to like come back to this, to this, to this series and, and do it justice because I told myself I would, I'm one of those people. I didn't hate dead space three the way everybody else hated it. I feel like, I feel like it was running its course. And you know, now that, now I said what I said earlier about resident evil, like, yeah, resident evil straight off the course. So yeah. So, I mean, we're we're vilifying dead space for also straying off the course you know one of the issues with dead space 3 though is it kind of it almost gave a very finite ending like once once you like think well, you saw like figured out the crisis all of a sudden like a, dozens of brethren moons surround earth and yeah you know, like well and now then- earth is fucked yeah. So, yeah. So that's my thing. Like, uh, it, it definitely felt like there was, there was supposed to be a dead space four to try to finish the storyline, you know, and stuff like that. But also at the same time, you know, like if, uh, if we didn't see the, if we didn't see the dead space, um, not extraction, what was it called? That's the, the dead space three. Like, uh, I can't remember when, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the, the DLC. I'll probably, I'll, I'll remember it later, but if we didn't play the dead space three DLC, then the way dead space three ended before DLC would have been fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, but but, but the fact that awakening the the fact that Dead Space Awakening happened and it showed that there was a plan for a fourth game, you know, like that kind of ruins it, you know. So yeah. so like this whole thing with the remakes, you know, like I was I'm I'm totally fine if they remake one and two and then do something different, you know, kind of like how like they want to retcon like the alien movies past after mm-hmm. the second one, you know. Um I'm I'm fine if they wanted to do something like that, even though it would be kind of a disservice because we learned so Dead Space 3 taught us so much about that universe, that one game, you know, um, because like it wasn't just about dealing with Isaac's uh, Isaac's trauma, you know, by the time we got to Dead Space 3, it was about it was about the galaxies at stake. Yeah, we we learned that these things are, you know, literally destroying star system. And that's Dead, they're basically uh, Dead Space's Reavers from Mass Effect. Yeah, and that's what I was about, and that's what I was about to say when we when we when you talk about the hive mind. If we look at if we look at how things how, what it is right because uh because you need one marker and a ton of necromorphs to create a brethren moon, mm-hmm. the hive mind had to be a proto brethren moon because it was in the center of a planet, it was in a planet, and there was a marker. <laughs> I I wonder if like the mark. <sighs> Because uh, there was a hive mind on the planet of the third one too, so I feel like H oh, seven, yeah, right. like the hive mind controls the necromorphs, mm-hmm. so that once I forgot well, everything's that. dead, then the convergence can happen. Yeah, and turn. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank that, you for that, thank you for reminding me. It's been it's been a long time since I played Dead Space three. I forgot there was a hive mind on Dead Space three. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> when they take a final boss and they just make it a regular boss and uh future game hey that's how that's is that how it's always done though yep (laughs) um yeah um yeah like the eastern murder was definitely out there like okay so those poor souls in aegis 7 you know they discovered a marker and like the the eastern murder was dispatched out there to crack the planet but they were actually there to get the marker yeah no you find out the operations was totally bogus and that they were doing something very illegal yeah yeah. All right. Well, we have run our course here. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish this up. I want to thank everyone for listening and or watching to uh, the Boss Rush Video Game Book Club, part of the Boss Rush Podcast and the Boss Rush Network. If you enjoyed our discussions, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast application. And you can support us over on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. At any tier, that, uh, any tier will grant you early access to this show. Uh, and also follow us on our social media platforms at Boss Rush Network. Laurent, thank you so much for joining me. It was a blast having you and having your knowledge of Dead Space. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'd, I'd love to do it again. Yep. Now we'll uh, we'll definitely hit some game that you know we can get you back on for. Let's come back from Mass Effect. <laughs> Mass Effect. We'll we'll throw it on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Throw it on the list. If you guys if you guys want to see me nerd out some more about like about the sci fi video game lore, like mm-hmm. let's just Mass Effect. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and or listening. And until next time, uh, which we will be talking about Amio, the Smiling Man from Nintendo, just Ooh. recently came out. So it's the second part of our spoopy season of I'm I'm uh, I'm enticed to pl- I'm almost enticed to play that game. It's I I'm pretty far in it and it's a very good story. So anyways, we'll see you for that one. So long everyone. Take care. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell. Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilin, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.